We're working on a movie that's got a budget of 100 mil, right? It was Swordfish, uh, right? It's Swordfish, so oh, yeah. Travolta, Halle Berry, Hugh Jackman, and, and Don. Uh, I was sort of the, the, the fifth wheel. But uh, I came in as a day player, right, to do just a couple scenes with Don. And then Don was like, yo, I need a partner for this movie. And then they looked at me and said, all right, well, <laughs> that's it. How about that? He's your partner for, for this movie. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez. Porque sabes que? Let's do the show. Porque I got a lot of that. Dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I got to go get some Neo Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George. Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Bye. Oh, my God. Hi. Have you ever met Gil before? I've never met Gil, yeah. Just until right well, now. Well, I've seen him on TV. What, what was he doing on TV when, when he was, well, he was uh, he, uh, Chris he, Hansen he, to catch a predator? <laughs> <laughs> he had and a, they, a, they did try and catch him. <laughs> 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 hey, is, is that legal, a, a sting like that? That yeah. show? Yeah. It could, wasn't, wasn't cops running it. It was him running it. It was the show running it. So if the cops would have been running it, it still would have been legal. There, there's no entrapment there. I mean, they're doing it here. Hey, this guy's out there breaking, the, violating the law by doing that, so they're following up on a crime. No, it's, we have people today, law enforcement agents today, have people that are doing that computer crimes, and just following them. Well, I mean, do you agree that Angelo Pagan? Do you agree that everything that you have on your computer is seen by someone or is tracked by someone? Absolutely. Okay. A lot of times people cover their their camera with a little pedazo of the tape because they can see you, you know, <laughs> put it together what a shelf in the you middle do? of the night I, I with one a, hand behind I got a feeling people look <laughs> you know at it. No, we, do a shelf, we do all that. Putting a shelf together with are one hand. Are with fuck, my wife and I? Sometimes we're like papers. We're like, oh, they got not. I think they can hear you. <laughs> I know. You, you, you just pass They the, tell the you to turn the like microphone off in your, in I, your phone, I got a too. feeling when they come to my house and start to watch and listen, they turn their computers <laughs> off. Like, they, they don't want to see <laughs> They'll be like, no, no. Pack it in. Now, who's you know, cry, who's we, crying? You, you know, we, we have people come to the house and sweep the place just to make sure that, you we're, do, not be, that we're yeah. not being, you know. How often? But he has a situation. <laughs> you have we a, have a situation. But, but. Those spy stores and all that stuff, or software that people put on, on someone's computer. Do, do wives do that to husbands, or husbands do I that don't to know. wives? I'm not smart enough to stay up on top. Of <laughs> Listen, if you don't want to answer, just say you don't want to answer. At don't try to throw me off like some life, fucking I'm kid old, asking you. You know? might have to ask huh? his wife that one. I know. <laughs> he, like, see, he's she probably got him Listen, followed. In a... He's a world class detective. He does that shit to throw you off. Like, <laughs> Listen, man, I don't know what in his I mind. He's like, shh. Okay. How about this? How about you go to a restaurant or you're, you're in the parking lot and a guy is arguing with his wife and your wife says, go in there and, and tell that guy to leave her alone. What, what is a, what's a civilian to do? Call the cops or call management. Stay out of it. But don't go in there, right? Yeah, just leave it alone. You know, Be a good witness. That's all you can do. Okay. Today, and because of civil liabilities and all the civil legality that's going on, you don't get it unless it gets physical. You know, you, you, you. Is that a good question, Angel? That's a great question, especially. I own a restaurant, right? Okay. So, so we have. But tell everybody what restaurant it is. Vivian's Cafe. It's a right? chain. There, there's so many. Uh, no, there's there's a, chain. a chain of there's one. A chain of the chain of one. The three V's. It's chained at five in the afternoon. It's the only restaurant in L.A. in the San Bernardino Valley that opens at six in the morning, <laughs> close at seven fifteen a.m. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna mess up my hours. I know. People are gonna show up at seven. I'm not gonna be open. Okay. <laughs> So Vi let's answer that question. I got another one. Vivian's on Ventura and Vineland. That's a, where I'm a at. A great okay. place. So sometimes... And also, you don't think marijuana makes you lazy? I've been, ha I've been going over there for five months and some basketball players that are retired, he said, hey, they're opening a marijuana store next door. It looks the fucking same for the last five months. They haven't even taken the boards off. He goes, oh, these big time players. Permits. Permits. We're having, they're having permit issues. <laughs> she might well, they're like, we'll go tomorrow. <laughs> Five months, they haven't even taken one nail off. <laughs> we were going to fix that wall, but then we got high. No, no. Yeah. yeah uh, was, uh, I, think, I, think I, you, I still believe it makes you lazy. Okay, so go, so go ahead. So you have a restaurant. So, you know, sometimes the homeless will come and sit and, like, just, like, build their whole living room right in front of my property, right? <laughs> 
And I'm, uh, so I call the cops and they're like, yeah, well, you can't touch them because of blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm not gonna put my hands on anyone, but out comes the mangueira because it's spring cleaning time exactly. and that's the only way I can do it. So I hose the whole place down. What rights do they have? What rights do they have? I, I'm not familiar. All this stuff started once, once I left. Before that's the you, problem. In the seventies, they were keeping was, this town together. Yeah, in, the se- in the seventies, the only homeless dude was Billy Jack. Remember Billy that's Jack? That's right. Billy Jack there was, was one dude. But like he was one bad Indian. dude though, and he nobody messed dude. with him. Uh, before you couldn't. It was against a lot of block sidewalk. Now people are living on the sidewalk. They're blocking parking lanes and everything else. And the court system has said you can't move them unless you find an alternate place for them to live. So uh, they're between a rock and a hard spot, and you can't. And they're a. I feel sorry for them. Because some of them are homeless veterans yeah. with PTSD, some of them are just people that don't have nothing that are lazy. What's they're the still end? humans, and they're taking advantage of the system. They're using it for dope sales and using dope. Other people are nuts out there, and but I don't know what the answer. But is. also, you know, yesterday we were in here and uh, those guys were saying that they carry pieces now, like homeless people. They get they have weapons. And they have guns in their tents. So if you go in there and you're trying to be like, hey, man, you got to move your house outside of my restaurant, and they'll fire on you. Yeah, move this. <laughs> yeah. They'll yeah. Fire. So you have to be careful. Well, that's good to know. Because they'll, they'll fire. I'm they'll... changing my plans for tonight. <laughs> bubble, bubble, bubble. Because <laughs> I was going to be all But they do. Now, now, it's a bigger problem. Like, you know, I would just only say Los Angeles. I've only lived in L.A. You lived in New York. It, it's a bigger problem now. Yo, San Francisco. And San Francisco has always been a big problem, but yeah. but how, what's the answer to the to the homelessness in this country? Move them, you know. Let let them find them, find them places to move. Uh, I'm a firm believer. I, I I feel sorry for them. My heart goes out. How many people would love to live in Ven- on Venice Beach, but they can't afford it? But yet they can set up camp and they can do whatever they want. And what about our soldiers that are in Afghanistan and in Iraq that are living in all that heat with all the packing and they Correct. live in tents in the summer? Well, we have plenty of land out here that we can certainly build them a, their own community if they want to live, but they don't want it. So I don't know what the answer is. And part of it, and a lot of them are now mentally challenged. You know, they have problems uh, mentally. So it, it's a tough issue. One that I'm glad I'm not asked to answer. It, you know, it's 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 definitely. My my question is, where are the families of these people? Because w- right. I know that we got a couple of locals in True. our family, but. You know, we try to we try to help them out. Oh wait a minute, what, what's happening? We won't be homeless. We drink, two, we drink three of these. If you drink three of these, we'll be homeless. Your wife will be like, get the hell out of here. Go watch you go live on a sidewalk in front of the restaurant. Mm. It's the George Lopez Mexican George style lager. George Lopez. Woo! It's made with one hundred twenty percent meows. <laughs> All right, so only twenty. It's down. Just the flavor. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, so so it's a bigger issue, and even now they have uh, second stories on there, and they have gardens. Yeah, the dude the dude in like Cahuenga over the one hundred and one. He's got an elevator he's got a in there. Palace going on. Yeah, there. yeah, he's got a two story place. You know, yeah. it, it's it's incredible. So, a lot of times people live paycheck to paycheck, which is very 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 difficult, and um, or if they're Married and they live Petra, Petra, and they get separated, and the wife ends up on the street. It, it's a, and I don't think they have those like the, is that midnight mission? I don't know if that's. It's still there. It's still there. I'll I'll tell you what. It it was just within the last two years. I was working. I was working temporarily for uh, Department of Children and Family Services. I was you working were? internal affairs. Yeah, just for a while. They asked me if I do it, help them out for, and right outside. How many times did you cry every day? Because I know you. No, I, I, I didn't cry. These people. You didn't cry? No, no, no. Come these, on. These are just people. That, that, I wasn't dealing with the victims. I was dealing with people within the company okay, that well, were messing right, up. Because if you were dealing with the victims, you'd be crying all the time. I, I couldn't he's do got, it. He's got a, a big heart. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with the kids on a steady diet. And but a big anyway, waist, but at a little neck. There, and a little there's neck. a guy. <laughs> there's a guy that lived across the street. You know, he had his tent set up, and he was trees to hold it up and keep the rain out <laughs> and and that guy i'm not kidding you walked to the corner he's standing at the corner and you know well, what's he doing over here and here comes uh ups made a delivery to him took a package yeah. from ups oh my God. on the corner <laughs> oh my god and well, we got you know, the new iphone <laughs> 12, you so, know? so what do you do you sit there what are you gonna do yeah. i don't know i i didn't have the answer 
But they're also aggressive, so I would say for people to be careful because, you know, you, they might be a nuisance to you, but they're the ones on the street. Yeah. And they get a well, little... Well, when I come out with the holes and... I do it con mucho be careful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because no, but <pero. laughs> what, what nationalities are they? Does it matter? Con, con mucho be careful. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, but they, ten uh, mucho cuidado. These, ten these, mucho take it easy. these in particular were uh, of the Anglo uh, persuasion. But, uh, <laughs> yes. And, you know, they were white, white homeless uh, people? They, Bobo, most of them are white homeless. What are you talking about? You don't see a lot of Mexican, Puerto Rican homeless out there, no, kid. Because they, we, we uh, take care of our own. Out, out there. It, I used to, <laughs> when I'd leave, my office was near, let's say, uh, 6th in Vermont, you know, that area. That's where the offices were. I'd go down 6th Street to go home. And you go down the Skid Row area, the, both parking lanes were taken with people living on the streets yeah, and on the yeah. sidewalk. And people, somebody walking around naked picking flies and birds out of the sky. And nobody cares. It's like, that's normal around here. You know, it, it's different people getting in the way. And I'm sitting there. One day I'm, I'm going by and some guy, some uh, lady has got a shopping cart and looks like she's going to ram a car. And, I'm, and I have a decent vehicle and I'm saying, now what am I going to do? You know, they, yeah. do I hit the lady? If she comes up to my car in front of it, do I hit her? Do I stop? Let her wreck my car? You know, she comes up with a couple of people. Do I, you know, I was packing. And if they're going to attack me, what do I do? And you just wait. I stop my vehicle, wait for some other car to come by, then I punched it. Well, she was distracted. I got through. And no law enforcement around. And these people aren't doing anything because that's everyday activity out there. The everyday activity. Do you, are, well, you don't have to answer this. I think you already did. Do you, have, do you, do you carry 100% of the time? Not 100%, about 90% of the time. Um it, it, and it's hard to get a, a, a license to carry as a, as a civilian, right? It's It was almost impossible locally before, but now it's a little easier. It, it is a little easier. Let me easier. ask you, how about Can this? We, how about this? If you hit a homeless person in the middle of the night, let's say you're coming back from the club, or from, uh, uh, would you pull over? Should a person pull over, or you figure because they're homeless, like... Oh, no, I'd pull over. Uh, okay. That's a hit and run. I don't care. What do you mean? You mean hit them with the car? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's destitute. Yeah. 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 You do pull, I'm, I'm not well, going to go to jail for anybody. Because, like, if they're yeah. dead, what are you stopping for, really? I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if they, you know, if they... You have to stop. Okay. I have to stop. You have to stop. <laughs> well, if not, yeah, you want to talk about the, this beer? This it's going to be on the news tomorrow, you know, looking for a no, no. felony hit and run suspect. Okay. Yeah, made a good point. Not going to jail for anyone, right? yeah. even if it's a weird situation. But I think that in these in this climate, there's fear in everybody. There's fear, like you know, you have kids, you have a daughter, you young man, that that when they go out, um, how would you say that they don't get? Is, do people still carjack? I, I think they yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, you oh, yeah. Kidding? Yeah. Like, I think yeah, you have to yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. I think this is this isn't just for like L.A. I think this is just as a concerned parent that you would you would almost have your child not go out from like eight to midnight on a week. On a week. Like the the less the the more you can get done during the day. Yeah. And the less you're out at night. I think you're. I don't even like my twenty two year old grandson who yeah. works out four days a week yeah. he built like a like a brick house good i don't even like him going out on the street he drives a nice car and they'll jack him they'll beat him just because they're celos you know they're jealous know. uh problem he's, he's not a banger doesn't do any never been in trouble he's a good kid i don't know that he's street smart enough. he's been so good i don't know that he's street smart enough to stay out of the wrong areas yeah. or whatever Mm. It's, it's uh well you could always do what i do i put a track well for him i don't i'm not sure but i put a tracker on my daughter's car oh yeah of course and I when mean, i see I, where she's sure. at in certain sure. areas i jump in the car and next thing you know i'm there and she's like dad <laughs> how interesting that we show up in the same places together okay so if you lose <laughs> a, figure it out if yet. you, you lose a call. dog if you lose a dog <laughs> mm -hmm. and that dog ends up one time there was a jack russell terrier that had a party at my house and Jack Russell Terriers, are, they take off, right? This motherfucker, Jack Russell Terrier, was in Monrovia in 25 minutes. They found him. That motherfucker was in Monrovia. Damn. Like, they just took off, went all the way up Olive, got on the 210, <laughs> got off on Verdugo, and then went up the, up the hill towards Sierra Madre. That fucking dog was gone. Merged. But they chipped them, and they found the owner. But kids, they don't chip. Are you against chipping kids? 
Like they catch a dog, they take the thing, they put it on them, they own her with a number, but a little kid that gets lost you just or have to, taken. You have to control your own fears. You know, I, I can't do that. They have privacy rights. They have this. I'm not going to follow them all the way. And, you know, my wife, you know, she she's always in fear. However, you can't let fear dictate your life either. That's true. Fuck. That's crazy. The dark web. See the dark web? I'm, I'm bidding on some little chinita. I'm the last. There's two left. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Can't lie that again. So, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, Angel, so Angelo is uh, is Puerto Rican, born in the islands. No, I was actually born in, well, actually in the island of the Bronx. Yeah, the and Bronx. then I grew up in the island of Manhattan, which is really an island. But The island of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, very different than what we, we brought up. Where did you grow up in what, what part of the Bronx? There's a lot of talent that... There, there's a lot of talent in the Bronx. Who's come out of the Bronx? Who's come out of the Bronx? J Lo. Jennifer J -Lo, Lopez. J -Lo, yeah. A lot yeah. of actors. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. A lot of actors. Uh, Hector actually, Labo. And, and you know what's funny is those two actually owned the first conga room right there on, on Wilshire. The first conga room on yeah, Wilshire yeah. was a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> it screwed up the second one, but anyway. But yeah, Jimmy Smith and Jennifer, they were they both uh, were owners there. Oh, no way. You've been in New York? You've been in New York? I've been in New York. One time, on a case, I loved it. I just thought it was all. I, all I could do was you, laugh. You could walk everywhere. Every other word out of their mouth was fuck, <laughs> fuck this, fuck them. You know, and and I just I'm laughing. As, as, oh, we as can a, say fuck on this. Yeah. So oh, so oh. As, as my cop <laughs> as my cop driver, you know, he, he's driving me around, and he sees me laughing. He says, "What are you laughing about?" I said, "I just love your accent. I love that every other word out of your mouth is fuck." He says, "You know." He said, let me tell you fucking something right now. <laughs> he says, I love it. people not from New York, he says, they either, late, they either love us or they fucking hate us. What they don't fucking know is we hate the fuck out of each other. <laughs> yeah. there you go. Right, right. That's, that's true. That, what, what case was it that drove, that went to, don't uh, have to say what, what it was, murder no, case? or Yeah, 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 yeah that's the only thing I'd go on. It was a murder case. It was out of a local uh, gambling, gambling parlor over here and led us to New York. And New York cops just do different you know, back then, this is probably back in the late 80s, early 90s. And they do things differently over there. You know, it was just, it was incredible. Is that pre or post Son of Sam? Uh, that was post. post. That was, okay. yeah. 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 These guys were just something else. You know, they they did things their own way and they'd gotten, I said, if we, if we tried that back in L.A., you know, we'd be fired, we'd be in jail. These guys didn't care. Great bunch of guys to work with. Uh, I played a softball game. New York's game. finest, they say. I, I played a softball tournament in Vegas, and I was pitching. And soft, slow pitch, you only goes seven innings. And it's a tie score. Bases are loaded. Two outs. I'm on the mound. I'm pitching against New York. Oh, and then guys from New York, they start giving me the wave from inside their dugout. <laughs> and I'm just up there. I'm I'm laughing. I'm laughing up on the mountain. You can hear him say, look at this crazy motherfucker. He says, the winning runs on fucking base, and he's out there fucking laughing. So they won a the game. They beat me. They came in. There was, all, after the game, they said, hey, why don't you go with us? We're going to go have some fun now. And I told the guys I was with, I'm, see you later. Yeah, I'm going with the guys from New York. <laughs> I, I love them. And they came out here a couple of times when I was doing ring announcing. Uh, boxers from New York. Would come out and fight the guys from LAPD and the sheriff's department. I didn't know you were doing ring announcing. Well, where? Well, yeah, I've done it. Well, I've done it at the Olympic Auditorium. I've done it oh, for the poli for the police Olympics, not the big Olympic police Olympics. Uh, done a few pro fights, but I, I loved it. The guys from New York were always a blast to be around. I, I, I love them. Let me ask you a question in terms of everything that's happening with the with the police, right? Of course, every time somebody does something bad, the media is all over it. How are you guys dealing with that internally with the you know, with the bad cops and the good cops not really doing anything in terms of protecting people from the bad cops? Uh, let me let me say this. The the guys that are working now, my heart goes out to them. They've got a job to do and they're just going to do it to their Man. to the best they can. They understand. They're under pressure, but they're going to get the job done. There are bad cops out there, and the bad cops make it bad on everybody, including those of us that are retired. I haven't lost faith in them. Those guys are still going. They're busting their asses out there to try to do things right, and you're not going to stop them from saving your life. And we talked about it once on the show uh, a couple of episodes ago where the father that just lost his son was one of the biggest advocates against the against law enforcement. He wants some hell to answer, cut their funds, and now his son got murdered. 
and now the same people that he wanted to help defund and he was an activist against, mm -hmm. he wants them to solve his son's murder. Yeah. And, and he says, yes, I was an activist, and I still want cops to be brought to justice if they mess up. Well, good cops want bad cops brought to justice. He said, but I also want justice for my son. And as he should receive it, he should get it. Not because he's an activist, not because he's anything, just because he's a resident of the city of Los Angeles in this case, and everybody deserves uh, justice. Nobody Absolutely. has a right to take anybody else's life. But also, but also, I don't think the police departments in Los Angeles or even across the country want to admit how under police they are. Certainly. How they need thousands more officers and how nobody wants to be a police officer. Why would you? My grandson was going. He had filed. He had applied. He was going to be a police officer. He says he wanted to, His dad's a cop. But more than that, he says, I want to be like you, Papa. Me. He says, I want to be like you. And he applied. And I said, you do it. You do it all on your own. I'm not help. You know, no help. So he did it. He applied. Everything's going good. And then I asked him one day, you know, what happened, son? And he just didn't want to talk about it at first his mom told me that he had had a change of heart talked it over with his dad just the way things were going in law enforcement he it, it changed his mind and he was a good kid and he didn't want to tell me because he thought that I'd be disappointed and I pulled I said no son you know I'm happy that you made the decision this job isn't for everybody and I'm glad you recognize it now because it would only come out later on and somebody might have been hurt well I mean if you have if you're hesitant about anything that you're doing especially something that's life and death every every <sighs> Situation, you sh yeah. you should be a hundred percent in, uh, because it, it, it's a tough it's a tough. It's a, it's a, your own life is on the sure. Highway so Patrol sure. and all of those. Do you think that those guys that you know a lot of people now have, uh, you know, you pay like personal security like those guys that drive around in the middle of the night. Uh, I don't want to say a name, but you know the security that you pay for three times around the house at night or. Oh, okay. Those, I, I, I see what you guys. Do you think it's worth it? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not. It's a I'm set not, of eyes in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, I'm not wealthy enough to afford something like that. But even if I could, I don't think I'd have. You know, once again, I don't think I can live in fear. My house has been broken into before. And all I said was, okay, next time they come, I'm going to put signs up around my house. Hey, okay, this stuff is over here. This stuff is over here. Don't make a mess of the rest of the house. You know, uh, recently while doing a live uh Zoom with Channel 11, uh, Somebody, the cops came, they were chasing somebody, the guy tried to come over my fence, he had a tire iron in his hand, and his partner went one way, he came the other, all of a sudden he saw that my son was sitting right there, he got scared, he ran off. So I've been in the same house for 40, 47, 48 years now. It's the first time something like that's happened. Yeah. So I'm not going to move, I'm not going to hire security to be out there protecting my house or anything. It is what it is. When it's your time, it's your time. You know, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not pessimist i'm not an optimist i'm just a realist you know but also people shouldn't leave things in their car you got a lot of homeless oh, yeah. people and they no. walk by and you leave your computer in yeah. the car or you leave your no jacket doubt. in the car that's going to get leave, broken into you, you leave nothing car. seen yeah. out in the open make sure your doors are locked the only thing that they can't protect against right now and the big thing around here, at least here in la county is catalytic converters people are stealing yeah. their crowd <laughs> three minutes get in there eh, eh, and they're gone catalytic converters it's got to do with and engines or something. What, right? Yeah, it's a thing underneath. Uh, it's part <laughs> yeah. of the exhaust system. And what do they do with them? They go and sell them. They're they about, make meth? They're, they're about uh, fifteen dollars to $2,500 a piece to sell. Yeah. And, and there's like a precious that, metal that, inside. something that, that breaks down constantly? That's why? No, no. It l looks like a muffler. The old the old version of a catalytic yeah. converter. What they do. Um, but it's got, there's got to be a huge market. If people, wait a minute. We, this we, is cut down on emissions. There you go. Yeah, cut there's like there's the palladium, I think. I need one for my culo at night when I take my <laughs> Cut down on the transmissions that come out of my oil. Yo coño. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, the housekeeper comes in, Mr. Lopez, my puro patulo, patas and culo, and patulo in there. The hybrid. I'm glad I got a dog now. You know, the dog in there, the dog farts terrible. Yeah, you so can now, blame it on him. Yeah, so now <laughs> all I do is, Milo, get over there. <laughs> but but it, it does, you, you, you know, if you hear him barking, you know it's something. Yeah, like I, like um, well, except for my dog, you know, we, we picked him up. We we found him. He found us. He's ours now. He doesn't bark. He doesn't bark. The only time he barked, the guy that came with the crowbar, 
It was like he was protecting us. He barked a little bit. See, he knows. After, he knows. But he, he knows. knows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he knew. He, he, was, he knows now. He's there to protect. So in the, me. so in the in the area that I live in, I hear a lot of gunshots at at night. Shotgun blast. Man and woman got shot no a couple shit. weeks ago. Shotgun blast. Bam. What? You hear the boom, boom, and it makes a sound after. I didn't realize. If it, when it shoots, boom, it makes a sound after, like like a like a residue. Three times. Well, if it's a shotgun, it's probably all of this all the scattering. All of the scattering. Yeah, yeah, scattering. And uh, it makes me want to shoot a gun in the air, but I shouldn't. Have. <laughs> well, let, let me let me well, tell you. I do, don't I want do to shoot it straight the, up, Papa, because I don't want it to come down. No, you know, I know, man. Like but, that. But I've handled deaths. I've handled deaths where somebody has shot a come down and hit somebody what, on what the ground. What do they think that the bullet's going to stay up in the air? It's got to come yeah. down. So be careful. It's going to be going pretty fast, there. too. No, no, I know. It comes down faster. People Those are out things. there shooting your gun in the air. Don't Those things go again, off around my house. Mucho be careful. Oh, mucho yeah, be careful. Because they, <laughs> see, no. Those things go off around my house, and my wife says, was that a gunshot? Was that? I said, I don't know. It's either firecrackers, fireworks, or it's a gun. Can it go through your roof? How, how? No, mm. no. Okay, it'll stop. I said, so if you're that concerned about it, baby, I'm going to go back to sleep. Go out and go on the front yard, okay. look around. Somebody pulls a 22 on you. Should you be afraid of your life? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about Because it, it, it always depends on what it hits. Sure. Right. Right. That's right. Because it goes it's clear a 22, through. 22, 22 yeah, ain't going to go still. through you. 22 causes a lot of damage cause, because it's such a small caliber, small bolt. Bounces around on the inside of you and re- wreaks havoc on the inside. These other larger calibers, they bigger hole, bigger damage, yeah. but it doesn't bounce around and just goes through you unless you're using. Damn. And if it doesn't points. hit any organs and it goes right through. Yeah, it goes right through you. you you're shot. good. 22s are dangerous weapons. You can't carry a weapon on you without a permit in the car, right? Especially no, if it's loaded. You, you, it's you felony? can't. You, yeah. Uh, it's a How many word. years am I going to do in jail when they find me? I mean, I mean, what, a, person, I mean if, a person I mean, my that, that happens. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, you, you advise people. Somebody once told me, I'd rather go see you in jail than go to your funeral. Yeah. yeah. I think Absolutely. I think people, you know, I think people are trying to, in a, in a sense, take the yeah. law into their own hands sometimes when they go and confront people and they get... Yeah, you, you can't... Either you, they get knocked out or they get shot or you see neighbor disputes. <laughs> if you have a dispute with your yeah. neighbor, what do you do? Like, you know, there's that neighbor, that video where the guy shot the wife and he shot the neighbor, went back and he shot... And killed them both, and then went yeah. and just sat on the Pennsylvania right, just like walked right across the street and went on the stoop. I think he yeah. shot himself. Yeah, you just all you do is eat crow. You forget that you're a macho man. It's your neighbor. If there's a problem. Go back inside your house. Leave him outside. If you have so, a bad neighbor, what should yeah. you, What should you do if you have a neighbor that you don't like? Stay away from him. You should absolutely chronicle though everything yeah, exactly. that he does, so that this way at least you have some kind of a case. That's why I have video cameras around. Happens. I do have a lot of video uh, around, a lot of cameras. Matter of fact, we got the guy with the tire iron. Nice shot of yeah. him and his, and his. So get a ring yeah. camera and yeah. get a or a whatever camera to to, uh, to see what's going on. Exactly. You know there was a robbery up where I live, and then the police officer knocked. It, didn't have a uniform. I think it's an like investigator guy with the thing, mm-hmm. and he said, "Do you have uh, your ring footage from you know mid December?" And we did, and they saw the car go by. He was going on all the houses that had cameras, and he saw the car go by. Sure. And pull that. Uh, I mean, nowadays with all the cameras all over the place, crazy. it's crazy that people think that they're actually going to get away with stuff. Just and, and nobody cares. And and with the current situation that we're in here in L.A. County, uh, nothing's happening to them. I got burglary detectives telling me burglary's a felony. The but. suspects know. They get popped for burglary. says, I got guys copping out. And as soon as they cop out, they say, okay, you got my ticket ready? Because they know they're going to get cited out. You know how you saw that guy in San Francisco going there in a bike, and he was pulling shit into a basket? Sure. And, they, and he, did you see that footage? No, I didn't see so The guy was no, in there in a store and just started putting shit into oh, a bag. Oh, that's right. And they, just, just they let him leave. You can't, you can't stop him, right? That's right. Well, you, you can, but once again, civil liability is on the owner. Uh, my friend, and I won't mention his, the, the restaurant because I don't want people to go down there and start doing this, but the one I talked to you about outside, where you know the parents, you know when you when you used to sing, mm-hmm. uh, he says he's got at least two a night. They go in there, order food, eat, then just get up and walk away. Yeah, and you can't stop them, man. Well, you you can, but then you risk the civil liability if somebody gets hurt while you're trying to detain them. Then you know they're going to turn around and sue the business, and that's money. And so, what do you do? It, it's uh, it, it's tough. It's a tough world. Hmm, I don't have answers for these. Uh, well, the cops should just kneecap you, man, and lay you out. And uh, well, not 
you know, not, not all of them, but but <laughs> they let you know that they they weren't uh, you won't fucking. That's around. right. You know, and they're and they're just cops are everybody's trying to prevent civil liability. When do you call nine one one? Because a lot of times they don't. Whenever they're not going to show up. Whenever it's in your mind, an emergency, an emergency that's going to be life, death, or medical emergency of some form. Not because somebody's not paying for you. If they're about to fight, because it dial nine one one. If there's a fight going on, or they're fighting with your, you know, arguing with your people, dial nine one one. You know, that's an emergency because it could escalate. The fact that somebody just stole a hundred dollars worth of food or a hundred dollars worth of product no. in a store. That's not an emergency. It's there. It's gone. You know, and it takes, I believe, the the magic number now is nine hundred fifty dollars before it becomes a felony. And uh, you know, there's it's it's an ugly situation. What about road right rage? Now. Don't get out of the car. Don't get out of the car. Be a good witness. Know. Don't. Yeah. yeah. You I said that twice. What is a good witness? Like, what makes a good good witness? Just, somebody that. somebody will take the time instead of yelling back. You know, fuck you. Throw it out. You, Take a license plate number down. If you have a if you have a camera, see him, take it. Remember as much as you can about. It, and then when the cops come, come forward. Say, okay, this is what I got. Be yeah. good with this. Because people but get killed in in road rage stuff, and it's just by the spur of the emotions. And people get shot. That little kid got shot. I re, it, it, yeah. it, it, and road rage is now the big thing. But I can remember when I was still working patrol, uh, going through the city of Montebello and Beverly Boulevard. Some young kid in a souped up was Cor- that a chinito name? Some young kid. Yeah, some young kid. Yeah, <laughs> a little Mexican kid driving a candy apple <laughs> red Corvair. Had it fixed up. He pulls out of this driveway. Right, I had to slam on my brakes. Went into a four wheel lock skid, and we did it. And he stopped, and he looked at me, and I just shook my head. That's all I did. Nothing more. And yeah. I'm about two miles from my station. I'm going to patrol. I'm going to work. I just shook my head like that. He made his. He made it out the street because he was turning left in front of me. He was going out. He made a U-turn and started coming after me. He had two guys in the car with him, and started coming after me and he tried running me off the road. And he did it once. I said, "Okay, let it go. You know, just don't get involved wow. right now." And he started coming up again. When he came up the next time, I almost wrecked, and I got out of it. He started coming up a third time. By this time, I grabbed my gun. As he started coming up, I stuck my gun out the window because I was no longer going to take this, and. He, it frightened him. He went westbound in eastbound traffic Whoa. to get away from me. Went up Beverly and Gerhardt. Went up Gerhardt, and but I didn't care. I got a license plate number. Good witness. Went to the station. Be a good witness. Be, it was a good witness. Wrote up a report. There's a, that's an assault with a deadly weapon using his vehicle as the weapon. And then told the guys that were going out nice, there's a reward if you find this car. And they found the car. Later on, they hooked him up. He was juvenile. They hooked up his dad because his dad started coming out and getting in the way. Hey, what are you doing with my son? What are you doing with his car? He had hooked him up too. And mom was the only one that stood out of it. And the kid was cited out. When he came back on Monday with mama, mama went in there and she said, yeah, some guy pulled a gun on him and he was trying to get away. And he said, well, it just so happened the guy he tried to pull the gun on was a cop. And he's trying to run off the road, by the way. He's he's the one that wrote up the report, and he's here right now. Would you like me to bring him in? And And she looked at him, and she said, no, you don't have to. I know, because he didn't tell me that all this Mm -hmm. gone on. It was him, and she says, if you weren't here, she says, I beat the shit out of him right now in front of me, in front of you. And the detective said, don't let me stop you. (laughs) You know, you're his mother. And she started whacking him. So it cost them the towing fees and impound fees for his car. The arrest of his dad and the bail to get him out and the court that they're going to have to go to because he was still going to have to make an appearance in front of the juvenile court. What happened to the case, I don't know. I never got called to testify. But that was back in the 70s. Wow. Oh. So did things right. And, and now today, you know, people are pulling out guns. People are doing this. I constantly tell my wife, you know, don't say nothing. Don't look at people. You know what? If you're walking to your car, let's say you're walking to your car uh, you go to dinner with your with your wife, and there and and you walk, or you're with somebody. When you're walking, and you see some some people. Does their will their body language language signal that it's something somebody you have to look out for? I advise my wife right away. Yeah. Just okay. Be, I think just so. Be careful. Because I think when people 
have bad intentions, I think they, their body language will say will say that. Like if somebody walks up and goes, "Hey man, can I talk to you for a second? Like you, I think that something can happen. There was an infamous family in East LA. It was about four or five boys, and they had a the daughter. Boys? No, close, close, uh, right there from <laughs> Oyomata. They were from El Oyo. And so this family, they were there, and one of them was on uh, one of these programs, like 50 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it was, and it showed him on TV. He was he was blind, and they used to hold the guys, and he'd go up there and, to rob them. He would uh, he'd cut them? He'd cut them if necessary, you know, and give up your stuff. They were drive-by shootings. The mother was the leader of the group. She was like a mob barker. She'd yeah. go out with them. They had steel plating on their windows. There were so many drive-bys on their house. They put steel plating on the oh windows. God. So years go by, I'm no longer in patrol, and I knew the family. And when they were bad, they'd go to jail. I'd take them to jail. But when they weren't bad, they were not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Hey, what's going on, Peter? What's going on? So now I'm gone. I'm in homicide. Been gone for years. I go to a, a big market. It, it was like uh, maybe a Jemco or something like that. It was a big, like Costco is today. It was one of those big stores. I don't remember Jemco. Do you know what Jemco stands for? What? Uh, give every Mexican credit opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Got gotcha. you. Got you. That's what they used to say. So I, I see these guys, <laughs> and they see me. I see two of them, and they're walking towards me. And I'm in the market. I'm in the store, and I don't have a gun on me. And they're walking at me, and they're just kind of looking at me, making eye contact. And I'm saying, okay, let's look, look at my surroundings. And I look at my surroundings. And two of the other brothers were walking behind me. So they've got me closed and they're coming in. And I stop and I'm figuring, and they're small guys. So I'm just figuring out how many get away from this, you know, get out of it. And they said, hey, remember us, Creel? And I oh, said, yeah, shit. I remember you. Like that. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I remember you. Why? And then one brother hit the other and said, I told you, Holmes, he'd remember us. I told oh, you, Holmes. Shit. Says he's bad. Hey, and we want you to know we're proud of you, eh? We see you on TV now. You're kicking ass. Says, uh, you're good. <laughs> and and uh, so they they remembered me, and I I thought it was gonna get physical. No, they just wanted to see if I remembered him because I was like their friend. But you know what? I think I think that you're a made man in law. You know you know how Richard Ramirez had uh, a lot of respect for for Frank because he worked on the mm -hmm. on the Hillside Strangler. Sure. And he wanted to know questions like that. I think because you helping to apprehend, somebody told me that the people in East L.A. caught the Night Stalker. I, right? Physically they did. Physically yeah. they did. Yeah. And then uh, he got pulled out of a sheriff's vehicle into the LAPD. That's right. When he got pulled over, he was in a sheriff's vehicle. And he said, it's me, man, it's me. But the, the sheriff was only on the job for like a week. Yeah, he, he was he was a rookie. He was working a one-man day car. You train with a two-man car. Can you imagine that? When you finally get out training, they kick you to a one-man day car to see if you can do it on your own. A one-man day car. So he's like, he's asking him questions like, who are you? And like, he just has no idea. So Richard Ramirez is like, it's me, man, it's me. And he's like, who, who, who are me, you? Who? He goes, I'm him. Did we hang out sometime I'm him. or something? I'm him. And he's, they're like, that's a, I'm, yeah, right? He's I don't like, know if I've ever told you this, but when LAPD got there, the cop that led the charge, the guy that was in charge of all the patrol guys that said, get him out of his car, take yeah. him. His name was George Lopez. It was LAPD? Yeah, LAPD guy, George Lopez. Good friends. They pulled him out of the sheriff's car, put him in an LAPD car, and took him to uh, Hollenbeck. If the sheriff had him, where was he going to go? To the sheriff's East, station? East LA station, 5019 East 3rd Street. <laughs> but not the LAP, not Hollenbeck. No, he'd have gone to ours. He should have gone to ours. should have gone to yours. And the guys from East LA, the patrol guys, uh, they were pissed off at that George Lopez. It's the biggest arrest in the history of the county, and you let him go. How did you let him go? You I know. know. And, and they were pissed off, but I, I just... I think we should interview that George They just Lopez. snatched him out of the car. <laughs> they just took him out of the car. Kept him cuffed, right? Somebody yeah. wrapped his head, though. They, Somebody put bandages on his yeah, head. Yeah, that was his... They, the, the husband of the lady he tried to carjack, he hit him in the head, gave him a coscorone, and then he was already tired. He had been running, jumping fences all across the freeway. He's exhausted. They surround him. They hold him right there. Andy, he was, man. Uh, he was running. He ran across the freeway. Andy Ramirez, uh, Andy Ramirez got there, called for paramedics because he did have the Crap cut on the head. head. Yeah, so they put the turban on his head, and he's sitting there as, as Andy is taking information on what we would call a gimme arrest, the citizens, you know, they're the ones that <laughs> just needed some information. They called it in, and he's doing this when George Lopez and the Blue Meanies got there, and George says, yeah, that's the guy we've been chasing. The Blue Meanies. So they took him away. The Blue Meanies are LAPD? 
Well, that's what I call them. The blue meanies. <laughs> the blue meanies. So, so they caught the uh, um, the um, Golden State Killer yep. by somebody doing like 23 and Me. What's 23 and Me? I don't well, know. Like a DNA that, test. That's what you yeah, said. DNA, DNA. Yeah, DNA. They caught them through the DNA. Yes. Because you're sending in voluntarily DNA. They call it familiar DNA. Yeah. And they so said, him, and so, like, so wait a minute. In a box he, saying you can share your data. He sent in, or they had a, fam, up. a family member. You know when you put the you, you send in your <clears> you, <throat> you want to find out what your lineage is. Mm-hmm. You send in your family tree. Mm-hmm. Well, all that's held, and so when they had DNA, there's put in a DNA search. It hit on a hit over here. That's a family member. So then they just had to find out the family member who was linked up to. Got gotcha. you. So following the family member is what led to him. Yes. Yeah, and it was just like by sheer chance that this family member took because they just wanted to find out like, oh, am I actually Polish or some shit like that? And they just submitted their thing to Twenty Three and Me, figure out what they're sort of like. But you know, it seems to be first. fun for people to find out what they are. But you have to remember, people that are out there, that that information goes to the authorities as well. And it's it's available to them. That's why I don't care who I'm, where I came from. <laughs> I'm here, and me puerta madre. I don't care wh- what happened. And you know, that's DNA. That's not addresses and names. That's you it's know you. That's you. That's how they <laughs> caught that dude. That cop was like, "Let's see if you know if there's a, a match." How great are, is it for that though? Oh, did it, you it, think it, that the Zodiac killer was a police officer? I think that the Zodiac killer was a police officer. I I, I don't know. I followed the Zodiac, uh, and and there's just been so much. Some guy finally came forward a few years ago, said it was my dad, and he tells a story, and it's a very compelling story. Was he was he a, was he a police officer? No. And, but, the lady that answered the. The lady that answered the call, because Zodiac Killer ca- called the police station, he had a, a voice and he said, goodbye, Blue. like that, like very eerie. And she did it. She goes, I'm going to tell you the way he did it. Good, goodbye. That if I was one of the police officers, I'm not, but you know, in another life, I was a detective. <laughs> I would have gotten all the police officers to say certain words, and then I think it was a police officer. Because how do you stay one step ahead of the police if you're not a, an officer yourself? I, I should say alleged because I fucking get sued. They never, yeah. so so they never found um, Zodiac killer. They haven't positively identified him. No, they're, they're, think still, they're, they're still working on. I know they're still working. Well, on they the like case. just yeah, but, cracked one of his letters. I feel like a couple of years ago. Yeah, but also there's got to be DNA and footprints and all that stuff, right? I I don't know because I wasn't privy to all the evidence. And if they're good cops, they wouldn't release all that stuff to the public, like Diane Feinstein did. When the Zodiac Killer was out there, even though he was from San Francisco, I'd be walking home from baseball practice. You know, sometimes it gets dark like at 4.30 in the afternoon. Nice. I would see a man wa- watering the grass, and I thought it was a Zodiac Killer to fucking take off. <laughs> run, run through traffic and everything. I was a Zodiac kid, Killer. I was fuck, man. When I was working, when I was working everybody. murders, Zodiac Killer is the first case that really intrigued me. Still does today. It, it, it really did. It's, a, it's an intellectual guy, right? I think a lot of the serial killers are not, yeah, not stupid. Yeah, he's not stupid. You know, he did what he did. He was writing the newspaper. You know, he did this, the uh, BTK, bind him, torture, kill him. Do you know anything about the BTK killer? No. That was a guy from, uh, uh, he, he was he killed over a period of 30 years, several women. And when he, when he finally got captured, it was because he wrote a letter to the press wondering, hey, if I send you something via computer, would you be able to track it? And he said no. Well, he didn't know enough about computers to know that he could. Mm. And they tracked the computer to uh, the church. And who had access to the computer? Well, this guy did. When they finally got it, and and the guy copped out to everything eventually. He was a deacon. He was a Boy Scout master. He worked for the local animal control. He'd go out and give tickets like this. Harvey Milktoast, everyday type guy. You'd never know it. Mm. Uh, I just got done speaking in Austin. And had I not been drinking so much wine the night before, his daughter was at the same event yeah, that I was. Said. And she was there. I wish I'd have gone to see her I, because I was called out. I was actually called to go consult with those people out there. So his daughter, his daughter, Dennis Rader, uh, his, da- his, his, man knows. his daughter is uh, going out on the speaking Yes. On the was, speaking tour? She was there. You and just they, be clear, Dennis Rader was the BTK? Yeah. Killing Rader. Right, right, right. Yeah. And he wanted to be a police officer. He ended up being a, almost like a... Animal control. That's animal all. control. But he'd write you a ticket if your yeah. grass was too long or your shrubs were too high. He was just one of those power... He wanted to do, a, to there do was, power. There, there was a serial killer in, uh, in New York when I was a kid, and they used to call him Charlie Chopper. 
and he used to, he had mutilated like kids. What, uh, what years was that? Charlie Chopper. This was like in the 70s, hmm. before your time, Papa. Um, in the 70s, I was up. And so. I was and already so, loving that. So, I love it. <laughs> so we were like <laughs> eight, nine years old in the neighborhood. And so we would all get together as a gang and like try to stick together because Charlie Chopper was grabbing little boys and cutting their privates and doing crazy stuff. Wow. So the whole, I mean, the Upper West Side was, you know, on lockdown for at least six months and they put up posters all over the place. They had descriptions of this guy. I'm not sure if they ever found him, but uh, yeah, Charlie Chopper. In what just in to... one area or to the whole? To... Well, you know, I never left my block 108 in Amsterdam and Broadway. You know what I'm saying? When you live in New York, it's interesting, but you, you kind of don't leave your block. No, I know. You, your school's across the street. <laughs> you, but you know, people the... are more familiar because they live on top of each other, right? Right. And here, the, you, there you don't need a car. And you would walk to school and, and you could live on top and of each other. And you usually knew who the weird people in the neighborhood are. Yeah. You know, watch out for Cedric. You know, that, too, that dude is weird. But you knew that he wasn't Charlie Chopper, you know. Um, but then also everybody was always looking out the window. So if somebody was trying to pull some shit or somebody was to break into somebody's. I don't think they broke into somebody's house during the day. Of course. La Doña's always out there going, yeah, mira, look what yelling at, uh, yelling at you. Get the, uh, <laughs> I mean, right. They were, so here, nobody really pays attention. Nobody's right. really paying attention. Looked it up, still considered an open case. Someone confessed, I'm not sure when, but they were deemed uh, unfit for trial and sent back to the mental institution they were in. That was Charlie Chopper? Char Charlie Chopoff, it says. Uh. I don't know if that was another the name. I think Charlie Chopper's like an amusement ride. So. <laughs> um, but Charlie, Charlie Chopoff, maybe. But yeah, it says he was active uh, 1972 through 1973. Well, you know, uh, people are fascinated with, with crime and docu-series about crime. You are fascinated with this oh, stuff. Oh, most people are you, 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 you. Most people aren't? I didn't realize how many people were fascinated until this documentary went out and how many people are really yeah. fascinated. They're but I was, I've was i really been surprised. No. On, 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 uh, See, I would like to be one of those people that, that, that does, is not obsessed with murder. <laughs> You well, because, because my wife is so every time I see her watching the next forty eight hours, yeah. you know, like, honey, though, right? Oh my God, you got to get her on here. She she'll talk she'll talk murderers with you all day. Yeah, she, I think yeah, I think. But well, yeah. you know, he you know Gil, right? He caught the yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You have so much knowledge on serial killers. You know, the woman I've talked to you today. For you to just jump out with a name like Dennis Rader. I was called as a consultant on the case. I don't even remember the guy's name because it wasn't my case. You know, I just went to consult. I, I BTK is much easier for me. Did to you remember. ever hear? Did you ever hear him confess in court? He remembered everything. I oh yeah, he did. I and I've watched uh, a little documentary on him. He stood there. For, he stood there for hours and he said, uh, "A fantasy, a fantasy, sir, a sexual fantasy, sir." And he just went through so everything. articulate, uh, sure, yeah. with yeah. no. Amazing. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. I tied her up and did that, did, uh, and I did that. Now, 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 the guys that are sort of nomads and they just travel throughout. Those are the ones that are difficult to, to catch. Oh, yeah. Once they have a residency, they do. you have to be careful also because they had some, some guy from Texas. There were two guys from Texas, and uh, what about when you go camping, man? Do you, do you don't you don't you don't feel weird on those campsites? No, no. I'm campsites are RVs. Yeah, usually, everybody's friendly. Yeah. Everybody's friendly at campsites. Every uh, they're retired. These are people easy going. They spend a lot of money on their on their coaches, okay. and they just want to have right, fun. Sorry, they just want to relax. Two guys from Texas. But but if you're at a campsite and somebody shows up with a, like a hatchet and a mask, it's probably not a good thing. But they're yeah. fucking around like those clowns used to do. Like in the middle of the night, they go knock on people's doors. Yeah. Or right. stand in the middle of the street. Right. Don't be a clown and knock on my door in the middle of the night. I'm telling you right now, brother. You know that? Yeah. You know how those clowns would chase people? Yes, I know. What I do had, you do if a clown chases you? I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to chase me. I'm not that fast. I don't think that's the What do you do if a clown chases a, 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 a private citizen? <laughs> what do you do? You pray, pray, pray that he doesn't catch you. Yeah. There, there's, you, you know, you, you have the right that everybody has right to defend themselves, do whatever you do. You know, like a trap rat, you know, you're much bigger than a rat. When you get that rat in the corner, a rat's going to do everything he can to get away from you. A cat will do the same thing if it means jumping out at you. You know, he's got the element of fear on his side, so he's in control. Once that element of fear is gone, then you're on a level, a little more level playing field. So do what you got to do to But also, you know, also if you have lights around your house or in the driveway and you walk up to somebody's house and the lights go off, that will deter people from fucking with you. Because I hope if, so. If they can go on the side yeah. of your house and it's dark. I got to tell you. Does, does no, it matter? It doesn't matter. Because we had this crazy uh, stalking our home and the cameras would show him. Fuck it. Four, three in the morning, just like Not on walk. your property. Right outside. Yeah. Okay. 
inside one of the gates. Yeah, just walk, sort of still walking right outside the house. So it, 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 it can get a little spooky. What do you do if you have you. somebody camping outside your house and they know the limits, but they're there and they're antagonizing you? Maybe they're filming you. Maybe they're asking you questions. You walk to the car. You go to an appointment. They follow you to the appointment. What? But technically, it's not criminal. They're just going where you go. But you know, they're going. It's specifically you. It's not. It just so happens to be you. It's you. What? What? What do you do? Is there too many questions to ask? On that, 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 that's a heavy question. <laughs> Trust me, you wouldn't be following me too long. <laughs> you know, it, it would be over. But, they, but they're looking for you to make to do something to, to do them. A, sure, they're, they're trying to lure you. Like, yeah. yeah. uh, and Tifa, they're doing the same thing. You know, they're, they're following people, get a name. You know, they uh, on the freeways one time they put Sheriff Villanova's address. You know, painted. You know, put a big sign. Here's his address. You know, they're trying to get to him, and they couldn't. But they wanted it, and they're following him. And they go out and they park in front of your house. Uh, people come, nobody, fortunately, nobody's come, I'm not that important, they so, haven't hung around my house, so you get were, the mangueras out. So you were a sheriff, so you're, you're, you're a sheriff 100%, right? Yes. So Alex Villanueva, the, the, the sheriff, people are on his ass. Yes. You're a supporter of the sheriff. I'm a supporter of Alex Villanueva for sheriff 2022. 2022. Do you think that he would come on this, on this show? I, I don't know. You know, I talked to him about being on the show. Matter of fact, I, I talked to him after the, after I was I on with I hope that when you're out there, cabrón, because you're out there doing engagements. You're out there talking to the, yeah. the world and luncheons and, hey, and going to comedy shows. Spread the word. Let me, He's let me pontificating. Tell you, okay, drop, drop, some, drop a few cards. Let me, I don't know if you have a card. I'll give you a card. Let me, let me, let me I tell you, you something. <laughs> I, I told you I was MC for a, a car show a couple of weeks ago. This dude, is, there's, there's not those over here like, uh, like uh, Burt Parks, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody Yo, even you, knows you, who you want to come host my night tonight at the Sophie Tell. Oh, Hotel. that's another Let, place. Let's go. Hey, that's another place I want you to go. Let's go to the Sophie Tell over there um, on Beverly and La Cienega. I'm in. You might have taken a nap though. It's late. They start late tonight. We start around nine. Okay, but we go till two. Well, let's wait till we get out. We might still be here at night <laughs> with the questions that I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gave a shout out, and I, and I because I'm not. This camera stuff, you know, I push the video, and I'm talking to the crowd. I said, "All right, everybody, let me let's have your attention. I want everybody to watch George Lopez. Oh my God, hi! I've been on the show with him. He's a great guy. I wish he could have been here today. He's got other commitments. Couldn't make it. How about a shout out? How about a round of applause for George Lopez? And everybody starts cheering and everything. And then I looked at my camera to watch it later on. It didn't, it didn't, no, didn't, no, it didn't he forgot go. to hit play, just yeah. like a phone. Yeah, or something. He, he forgot <laughs> to record. So, so, so when. The history with Gil and I, then, we'll, then you know, we'll get to you, uh, you know, two hours in. The when when the when the detect when the series came out on Netflix, Ina, my publicist, was like you, you got to see this thing, you'll love it. And I watched it all the way through. I saw I saw Gil, but I knew Frank his partner. I knew Frank helped me out like eleven years ago or something. And I called Frank. Frank's great, always available, man. Those dudes, when you're when you're like a high profile police officer, a detective, and somebody calls you, they answer the phone because. It's kind of what they're used to. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're not like, oh, I'm retired. I don't. He says, hello, Fra hey, Frank, it's George. Hey, what's up, George? Hey, you still talk to Gil? Yeah, I still see Gil on occasion. Hey, you mind giving him the info, man? See? And then he called me, and then they thought it was a prank. And yeah. then I didn't call him back you know, for, for a month. <laughs> And then here he is, man. Here we are. I even made it to the, even made it to the billboard yeah, right the there. Oh, my God. Big, big Van Dyke over there. The, all the YouTube yeah, comments, God. if you're ever like not on or something like that, they're like, bring back Gil. Hey, so, <laughs> so how come that's fucking 200 degrees in here? Because I'm wearing a jacket? Probably. The jacket might be a part of it. Do we have the AC rolling, Aaron? It's on. It's on. Fucking look lower, eh? Maybe make it a little. We'll talk louder. You know, I had something, in my, something wrong with my eye. Oh, yeah. And, how's that uh, doing? And I thought I could do it myself. Oh. Fucking got worse. <laughs> it's like having a fucking heirloom tomato on your fucking eyelid. So yesterday the Did you have like the, a little sty or something? Yeah, not yeah. a little one. The guy came to my house and did it on my balcony. Now they're doing uh optometry at the house. He took care of it. I cool. uh numbed it. Usually you, know, you wouldn't let anybody near your eye on, yeah. on your balcony. What do they do to <laughs> like He flipped it with a he held it with a clamp, flipped it under and then cut it. Like Rocky, shit just flew out. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, asked to be the principal of the day at an elementary school. So it was all done via, via Zoom. So I'm on there. And one of the things I did was I read a book to a kindergarten class. And I had a sty. I had never had a sty before yeah. in my life, but I had a sty. And so they, I read the book to these kids. And they said, okay, kids, that was uh, 
Mr. Carrillo, do you have any questions for Mr. Carrillo? One little girl raised her hand, and she had a question, Asian. And I couldn't understand her. So I asked the teacher, I said, what did she say? She says, I really don't know. And little Johnny at the back of the class sitting next to her says, I know what she said. And he said, what, what is it, Johnny? He said, what happened to his eye? Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> She could see the style. Na- yeah, they're nasty. They, they, it, it was nasty. I think because your finger in your culo and then you rub your eye. <laughs> that, that's why. That, <laughs> that happened. That's why I just changed fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's what happens to you me when you, watch, to, you, when you, you watch TV. You go to sleep with an itchy butt. You wake yeah. up with smelly fingers. Well, yeah. Yeah. When you watch TV, you're not, even, you're not even aware that you're... You're touching your lower extremities and you're going like this and chilling it down. All the same time, you know, No wonder remotes. I you know, if you, if, if you do the test on a remote, <laughs> oh, it's, got it's got so much more stuff on it. I did the Dr. Oz show via Zoom. I still had the sty. And he says, how you doing? I said, well, shit, I got this sty, Doc. I don't know if you want to do the show. Can you see? He says, it really isn't that bad. He said, let me give you a word of advice right now. I said, what's that? He said, warm compacts. Put the warm compacts on there. He says, it'll go away. Not a problem. No, no, no. And it's underneath, though. Mine, uh, mine Yours went away. Mine, mine I had went mine away. for, I had mine since the middle of April. Oh really? I hadn't noticed. Before. And wow. it wasn't going away. Really? And finally they cut it. Does it hurt? Or you said they numbed it up? Like I just don't want to even. They numbed, that they numbed it up. That guy didn't fuck around. He numbed it up and then he flipped it and cut it. When is it going to be uh, available for presentation? Uh, December. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, eBay. Who in your family was musical? Who in my family was you know, musical? Genealogy, was your, was your dad into, was your, what did your no. dad do for a living? My dad was a laborer all And grandfather? Life. My grandfather was a, he wrote, he was, my grandfather was a viista, but he was a musician. Yeah. Played did you know trombone. your grandfather? Yes. And your grandmother? Yes. I, but they, I found out later when I was in, I think I was in Germany when I'm talking to my mom on the phone and she's crying because she found out that my mom, that her mother and father, my grandfather and grandmother had never legally gotten married. So cool. she's crying. She said, I'm a bastard. I'm a bastard. I said, Oh, come on, mom. You know, it's That's okay. interesting that two people you know, back then they, wouldn't get. Yeah, they, they never got married. And I found out my grandfather was like a rolling stone. You know, he, he had kids all over the West, Southwest, you know. And, and he was, one day I used to have a horse and I rode the horse down my mom's and he was what the there. What do you mean one day you used to have a horse? Nobody, you, you just had a horse growing up? Yeah, at, no, not growing up. I was an adult. I bought the horse. And I <laughs> loved horses. I had a horse. Just and, one day. And then, you know, and I bought it from a charro, and I love charros, and wow. I love the I love the culture, everything. I, I rode it down my mom's because where I had him stabled wasn't too far away from my mom's house. I rode him down my mom's house, and my grandfather was there. Awesome. And he came out there, and he started looking. He started telling me about the for confirmation of the hind legs and the this and the that. And I looked at my mom and said, how does he know so much? And she says, Dile, she wanted my grandfather to tell me, he says, you told him when he was an adult, you would talk to him. So he took me into the house, he sat me down, and all in Spanish, he told me that he never wanted to tell me this because he didn't want me to grow up like him. And he used to be a villista. He came to the United States running from the Federales in, in Mexico to get away. And we're here and I find out he was a hell of a knife man. You know, that was especially yeah. the trombone player. And he used to ride horses. He never wanted me to be anything like him. And I was so proud. I don't know. That's pretty cool. I, yeah. I was so proud, man. My grandfather was a beast. I, it was bad. He was bad, dude. You know, but I, I still like my horse. I don't care what he said. I still That's like why I gave horse. you that, that wanted, wanted poster. Yeah. The Pancho Villa poster from the Revolution. So, Who in your family? Tell me, because... Uh, you just a, don't become musical well, by accident. No, that, that, that's, a que- that's a good question. But my dad sang his ass off. But he never got to fulfill any of his dreams. But his best friend... What did he want to do? His, what was his dream? He wanted to sing. He wanted to sing like Santito Colón. You guys don't know who that is, but Santito Colón was Tito Puente's lead singer for years. And Tito Puente didn't sing, right? Tito Puente didn't he sing. He was just he a was, percussionist. He, he was a percussionist. So uh, Tito Puente, La Lupe, Santos Colón, they would all come over to the house oh. after the gig. And of course, I was just a, a kid, so I'd wake up at six, uh, you know, at three or four in the morning, and I'm uh, all of seven, eight years old, and Tito Puente's there. They would give me quarters so <laughs> I could send my ass back wow, to the man. bed, you know, so stop leaving alone. But I never understood why everybody came to my house after the gig, and they would be smoking these little cigarettes, you know, which... Like clothes? Huh? Weed, or they were like clothes? Like weed. Or, okay. <laughs> yeah, weed. Yeah, those weed. Are, all right, weed. So my, our house was the party house, yeah. and they were singing, and we were playing Guido, and so that's where I got all my musicality from. 
But unfortunately, my, my pops passed when I was 11. And I didn't get to see Tito Puente again for like another 10 years because, you know, you get lost in the whole sure. yeah. who's taking care of the kids. You know, we were all orphans at that point. Um, and then I ended up well, well, 20 so years at, later. Wait, so, so at 11, and then how, how did he, can I ask how he passed? He had a liver condition from the Korean War. And back then, uh, if you had hep C, that's it. You're done. There yeah, was, it wasn't paying for a service. I'm so, yeah, it was yeah, thank, thank you for the service. Yeah, yeah. Because, but now with one injection, you know, people are actually safe. Back then, you were yellow and you got jaundice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Back, yeah, yeah. So he passed. He passed due to uh, liver malfunction, Um, and he wasn't really a huge drinker and and stuff. So you know, if my father was an alcoholic, I could sort of accept it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but the fact that he had contracted that from, uh, I believe rusty cans mm-hmm. in the Korean mm-hmm. War. They mm-hmm. open up those cans, they eat whatever's in there, and so he had contracted some sort of uh, whatever, and it, it affected his liver. But uh, I truly believe that had my dad stuck around, I would have been recording with Tito yeah. early on and all that other stuff. But I did get a chance to be on a, on a record with Tito Puente. Um, but it, after he passed, you stayed music. You stayed musical, right? Abs- you stayed in school. You graduated from high school. Or you left school to do music. No, I um uh, I was going to music and art, um, in uh, in New York, and then I, I I I in my senior year, I was so tired of school that I walked across the street to City College. I took my GED class, my test. Wow. I passed my, t- and I, that's it. I'm gone. Wow. So I, I didn't want anything to do with school. Um, and just started, you know, gigging, and, and I just I just love the music, you know, and so from there I had the pleasure. You started of, gigging uh, where though? Oh, uh, like just little local places like the barn and the Bronx, yeah, Center and just a stuff voice like club that. And exactly, exactly. But Manhattan College had a had had their ye- end of year festivities. Guess who was the band I was playing? Willie Colon. And Hector Lavo singing. Man. Can you imagine you that? Know, you know about Hector Lavo? No, I don't know about Hector. Man. I know about uh, Tito and Colon. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to. My sister used to listen a lot to Tito Puente. Tito Puente used to play at Our Lady of Lourdes Church uh, every year, twice a year. You know, he'd be over there, and I loved his music. I remember hearing. Amazing. Amazing. He was a great guy. And Tito Puente wrote "Oye Como Va." Didn't become famous. Until Santana covered it, uh, and so. then they go. Then when they told Santana, they go, "I'm going to cover Oye Como Van." He goes, "He goes, that's not rock and roll." And Carlos goes, "Not yet." <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him on the phone the other day. Not yet. Uh, but, which, but which you and I have to cover. We're going to do Oye, Oye Como I'm, I'm, I'm still working on it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going to go play guitar with him on a, on a Wednesday. Can you imagine? Let me know. I'm going I'm to break out a little Oye Como Van right now before we go. Let's go. But, but so then from then. Did you did you have friends that that went with you that were like support? I had a friend growing up that we went to the comedy store in May May fifth of nineteen seventy nine. I wouldn't have gone by myself, but he was like the guy that would go with me, my friend Ernie. Mm. And then somehow we drifted apart. So when I started doing stand up for a living, he was never around. And then when I got my show, he wasn't around. Or through any of the stuff, and he, sh- he should have been. I think we're not we're not friends anymore. Mm. But two guys grow up, and one guy wants to be a comedian. And the other guy's like, "I'll go with you." And then he does it. That dude's not around. Like it's weird. Do you have friends that went with you that my encouraged brother, you? Or? No, it was my, bro- my my older brother. He was older by two years, and he's the one who sort of encouraged. We were working as butchers in New York at that time. <laughs> Uh, from Crazy. 16 to 21, I was a butcher, no, I and he and he managed wow. the butcher sh- store. So uh, after so many years working as a butcher, look at these damn hands all know, messed man. up. Uh, he's like, "Yo, let's go to California so that you can realize your dreams." I'm like, oh, "Okay." Wow. So we jumped on a bus for 69 dollars on a Greyhound bus, and it took us three days <laughs> from New York to California. You still remember? I still Taking remember leaving New York. I, I still remember that day. Oh yeah, yeah, it's crazy. crazy huh? It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy yeah. man. But because we you know did. we're from here, but people were like he took a bus with his brother, comes out here. And where'd you guys land? Down in we LA? Up, no, we ended up in San Francisco because I had a one of my brothers was living up in in Sonoma County, um, up by Santa Rosa, 
And so he was the only Puerto Rican in the whole area. Oh, yeah, shit. Back. But he used to work as a translator between the Mexican community and the white community. It was all, it was nothing but Blancos up there. And it was almost like wine country migrants. and Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so we stopped off in San Francisco to visit him for a little while before I was going to be on my way to Los Angeles to sort of realize my dreams. And um, I ended up booking a show in San Francisco. And then, you know, it was Beach Blanket Babylon, which is the longest running uh, show that San Francisco had. I think that show ran for like 30 years. Where was that? In the, in the Down in the Italian district, right on Green Street at the Fugazi Theater. It's, it was a great show. Really. What's that a Fugazi Theater? Really, really interesting show. Um, and it was just all about, uh, I played Springsteen and Stallone. And there was other characters also playing. There, there was a, oh, also, it was like the legends. It was like the legends. There were other people playing Michael Jackson. And some lady came out in a Bush uh, outfit. And she was Barbara Bush for some bit. Uh, it was just song and dance and, uh, and, and a funny show. which. In but my you were working. State, but I was you working. You auditioned for it? I auditioned for it, yeah. I auditioned for it. I lied about everything. They wanted a, they wanted a picture. They wanted a resume. And they wanted a a prepared song. I didn't have any of that. So I just showed up with a story. Oh, my God. My car broke down. I left all my stuff. I don't have anything with me, but here I am. <laughs> Let's go. Do you have a monologue? Uh, yeah. <laughs> just made this shit up yeah. as I wow. went along. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have a song? Yeah. Uh, I ended up singing um, an Al Jarreau tune, uh, which is not an easy song to sing. I can remember the days in December, the leaves are brown on the ground. And the dude was like, all right. Still you sound got, good today? You, you, yeah. you, you, what did Al Jarreau, like, was he scat? He was kind of scat, huh? Yeah, he was one of the baddest. Uh, Al Jarreau was, he was a man. I, I, I met Al Jarreau at the Playboy Jazz Festival. Yeah, when the style, you know, older, a little spine bent. Mm -hmm. But he was still, he was still amazing. Wow. Oh, man, vocally, he was, he was pretty Ama incredible. Amazing. He was pretty incredible. So I ended up booking this show, and I, and I just started working in theater. Um, I ended up staying in San Francisco for a solid 10 years. I worked with Whoa. the California Shakespeare Company, with, you know, uh, the Berkeley uh, Shakes and all that other stuff. I was a thespian. <laughs> Yeah. Then I didn't realize that really, if you wanted to be a thespian, you have to get your ass to Los Angeles to do film and television because all that. But you were studying acting it, and yeah, music, acting yeah, and music. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you, you went to. L so then I came to Los Angeles. But you weren't married over there. You didn't, you weren't married before. No, but I had a couple of I had a baby mama though. Yeah. That had a, you know a couple kids. Um, because you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know how it would, when you're out there performing. What else is there to say? The sure. females oh, will find course. you. Right. Sure. And you will find them. And sometimes, uh, you know, that 99.9% uh, pill effectiveness doesn't work. And so you end up with a kid. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I have four. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love, I love the way my life turned it out. It is. I mean, you, it, you know, people get upset or they're like, oh, but, it, you know, it turns, it turns out like that. Like, you know. So then you come out here. So then I come out here and I start singing at a little place called El Florita. El Florita is, was on, in Hollywood on what? On Vine and Fountain. Yeah. All right. La Florita. You been there? <laughs> they closed that place down. Yo, yeah, they, 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 that place didn't No, but Florida long. had, yeah, so, okay. Uh, and everybody went to everybody, Florida. Are everybody you kidding? Went there. I'm yeah. singing this in this little hole in the, wall, in the wall. You been there to La Florida? No, no. Right there, Fountain and Vine. Mick Jagger jumps on stage with me there. Wow. Everybody. Yeah. A young Jennifer Lopez, a young Salma Hyatt. I mean, Everyone used to go to Florida, and a very young Leah Remini walked in, and the rest is history. What year was that? Was Leah working? Six. Was Leah working already? No, she was no. about to get King of Queens. When I met Leah, she booked a show. You know who Leah Remini is? Yeah. Actress. Actress. Yeah, she was yeah. in King of Queens and uh, for forever, and uh, she was in uh, Old School. Amazing in Old yeah, School. Great, 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 great performance. Funny. Uh, um, that rings a bell. Tough cookie, I would say. Oh, oh yeah, she's yeah. a pretty tough cookie. She's a cookie. tough cookie, man. She's tough. Oh, yeah. 
You don't want to mess with you don't want to mess with wifey. Okay. No, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Too. Yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, we met each other and then we reconnected because I was watching something and I called him and just said to tell Leah that I think she's the most one of the most courageous people right now. No for, kidding. Her stance. I mean, I mean, so so they were, and then I'd met him before, but never gotten the story. So La Florida and then. Yeah, and Jennifer and, and, and Leah were friends at that time, I'm sure, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we were friends with Mark and Jennifer, and, you know, we just, every, every, everything was great. We, um, I mean, you know, listen, we're 25 years in. It, I, I picked the right one, yeah. if you know what I mean. Because <laughs> when you're sitting there and you have all these young starlets and every the who's who in this place, it's easy to get lost in, in, in all that, right? But there was something special about Leah. It's, maybe it was when she met me and said, hey, when are we getting married? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I've never had a woman say that to me. But Was that her opener? That was her it's opener. A beautiful, <laughs> I think it's beautiful. That's her, that was her opener to me. When are we getting married? When are we getting married? Big moves. You got to respect that. It worked out, like you said. It worked out. I, I laughed. I said, no, you because I already have three yeah, kids. You were like, oh, I'm, I'm like, done. no, I'm done. No, yeah. She's like, okay. And 25 years later and a 17-year-old daughter, I think, uh, I think, I think we're going to make good. it. You've but you recorded, good. You, you recorded music and everything, right? You, you, so you my toured. first, so when I got to San Francisco, my first professional recording was with Mongo Santa Maria. Wow. Peter Scavito, Ooh. he wasn't using singers at the time, but I was new to the Bay Area, so Pete was like, yo, who's this new Man, young singer? Dude. Boom, he introduced me to Mongo. I recorded with Mongo. Um, you remember Bill Graham? Of course. Of course. So Bill Graham, the biggest rock the producer motor, yeah. in the world, right? So we're celebrating his birthday. Um, there was an old, old... Um, mafioso by the name of Pedrito Pellegrin, and he had brought in all these top musicians from Puerto Rico, right? We were gonna start a band in the Bay Area. And Bill Graham was celebrating his birthday, so I brought the band, because Bill Graham used to love to come to my nights, he would love salsa, he would just sit there and just enjoy the night away, right? I didn't know that he was the biggest producer in the world, I just he was just a sweet but he man loved, that used to come. He used to love that music. He was a tough fucking guy, but he, he loved music and he made the concert business and he made Santana and Journey and Steve oh. Ray Vaughan, all those, all those guys. So he asked me if I would play his party. I'm like, hell yeah! Who shows up? Santana's in the band, Tito Puente's in the band, I'm fronting the band. <laughs> That was my Whoa, band. You got wow. a super group. And, and, wow. and, I, and I had all these top Puerto Rican musicians from, uh, from Puerto Rico. Man, what a party. We had such a great... I actually have a picture of me and Tito at that... Did uh, you play at Winterland in San Francisco? It's not there anymore. Bimbo's was the... Was oh, Bimbo's, yeah. <laughs> Bimbo's. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, man. Look at that young, look at that young look stud. At Tito. And the Tito. That's great. I was calling Tito the young stuff. So that night, we're all hanging out, dancing on the dance floor, and Bill Graham is like, yeah, oh, we're taking this on the road. We're going to. And of course, you know, I'm a young, I'm just a young singer in town. They replaced you? I'm with the, no, I'm with the biggest promoter in the world. He dies in the helicopter, oh, actually, remember? Helicopter. Oh. Yeah, coming from Shoreline. Oh. Should have taken a car, man. Should have taken the car. Tito. But, uh, yeah, the Bay Area was... Uh, he was coming from uh, Shoreline, which is near San Jose, back to San Francisco in a helicopter. Yeah. And they hit the, they hit the wires on the way up. Dude. But it's like, from that close, take a fucking car, man. Last time I saw Tito Puente, uh, Bill Cosby was there. They were doing uh, the pasta house in uh, East L.A. You just used what to go there. The pasta house? It's on Olympic Boulevard. And Latin groups used to go the in there. The pasta house? Mm-hmm. Look it up, Grant. Really? Yeah. And they used to do, like, Latin jazz? Yeah, they'd like? go in there one day a week, and Bill Cosby would go up there, and he'd let them play with them for a he while. he played the drums, yeah, yeah. Not the drums, the congas. Congas? Yeah. Would that be Betty's Pasta House? Is yes. Is that right? Cool. Yeah. There it is, Joe. Is it still open? I think they just use it for rentals now. I don't, it used to be... Uh, so it like, it's a banquet hall, it says. Yeah. It used mm. to be Betty's Pasta House. It was a nightclub. You'd go in there, and... Uh, only little people, the Mexicans with money, go there. You see a lot of Cadillacs 
for that part of East L.A. was unusual, but you'd see a lot of Cadillacs going in and out of the place. Did you ever see Celia Cruz? No. The last time I saw Celia Cruz, we did we were doing an event at the Bonaventure in the hall in the early 2000s, and she was performing with her man in the back right there with the suit. I left at 2.30, and she was still up there. And the last thing before I left the room, I turned and I looked and I said, it's incredible that this woman, it's 2.30 in the morning, covered in sweat, jamming, nobody was leaving. I think I had to work the next day. And that was the last time I saw her. But the last time I saw her, I was impressed by her just the amount of energy that she had. At, at, on, I sang back up for her uh, at a performance here in in, Cali- in, uh, in People have forgotten about Celia. And th- I she think, was a beast on where's stage, that movie? Where's man. that movie? Can we, ask, can we get another? I think they did a... Um, three-pack or four-pack? Yeah. I think they, they, they did a little series on, uh, on the Celia journey, but I'm not, I, I'm not sure that they actually you know, gave it the, the quality and the But you don't think her story would be... Attention. It'd be a good movie, huh? But they don't really do those great movies, man. great movie out of Cuba. I mean, let's not forget she started in Cuba with uh, Sonora Matancera and, and, and all that before she came over here and started recording with Tito, you know? Do you know, you, was, you know, it's unbelievable to think how many Latin performers that this world has never, they were niche singers and performers, but they shouldn't have been, and that, that, that are, are forgotten. Yeah, I mean, today, time. you know who passed today was Johnny Ventura. And Johnny Ventura, uh, I opened for Johnny Ventura back in, in like 30 years ago. He was the top, top merenguero, the top merengue singer in the world. And when I'm telling you that you should have seen the shows that these guys were putting on, talk about dance they movements. Were crazy, yeah. It was crazy. Johnny Ventura put on an amazing show. He's going to be missed. And how old, how old did he live to be? 81. Wow, it's yeah. a good. Yeah, he's, he had a I good. I can't run. believe that I'm sitting here next to this gentleman, and I can't believe you. You look at him, listen to his story, but the way he says, you know, merengue, Cuba, Puerto Rican, you. Not like he's not like a, a New York accent, but with that Mira. Latino roll. Con mucho be careful. Con mucho be careful. Con, con mucho be careful. <laughs> you know, I would say that I would say that the Chicano is dis is a distant heritage to Boricua in Puerto Rico and in New York. Close quarters in the Bronx, close quarters with family, everybody almost living together. And here, you have to drive, you go see your mom, you go see your dad. Oh yeah, over in the holidays, it's just every, all the doors are open, everybody's cooking, and, the, and every, you can smell everything in the, in the neighborhood. It's way different than us, than us here. Yeah. yeah, and you go visit somebody today, you go visit your abuela or, or, your, or your mother or anything, and you sit there, and at the visit, Everybody is uh, granddaughter drinking. Everybody's on their iPhones. Mm-hmm. They're not visiting anywhere. Everybody, everybody's doing this. Everybody's on their phone. I'm starting to get my that one's orange. This one is uh, yeah. We got uh, the sampler pack back in here. So, Gil, you've got the orange cream. Orange you got cream the on. orange cream. You got the orange have? cream. Grapefruit. grapefruit. Yeah, IPA grapefruit. over there. Este es uh, Jamaica hibiscus. This is my favorite so far. Yeah, yeah, we got uh, one more of those two right here if you want that's, another one. That's the one that I like. Yeah. Not your thing. The one that we just that? bring, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, this is the first time I taste it. This is, this is good. I, good. I, I like this, but I like the other one better. It's like a creamsicle. You know, the the alcohol beverage control says you can only have so much, but, you know, we don't. this goes under the radar. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty strong. The beer's doing pretty good. But but um, I think now that we've uh, come from, you know, 14 months, or still going back into a little bit of uh, the Delta variant that, that that's scaring the mm. crap out of me. I don't want to hear any more of the any more. My daughter just sent me a thing. She's she's on her way right now to uh, drop her off. My wife took her to the airport. On her way to San Francisco to watch the Dodgers. And well, I'm sitting out here. She's okay. They just announced you need to get that third dose now. Pfizer saying you need third dose. And now everybody, you know, you better get it. You better get it. I said, hey, FDA hasn't even approved it yet. Let them approve it. Let them get it yeah. out here. Then I'll get it. Because and they're not got, even sure about that yet. Yeah. They're saying it's showing signs that a third dose yeah. can enhance your chances. But yeah. but you know what they say to put a little bit of uh, what well, with you guys, a little bit of Purell or Neosporin under your nose uh, to kill the is it just under your nose to kill. Yeah, the, because the, as you, yeah, I but guess, then it looks like you got mocos all day. <sighs> that's true, but that's better than dying. I used to have mocos when I was little. It, they would dry up. It would <laughs> <you> would go <laughs> like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> nobody, nobody watched me to tell me. So, so, so in, you ever throw a moco at somebody though? Like uh, I've been. Uh, oh yeah, uh, 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 well, back in the day. Yeah. Yes, you ever fart on stage and have somebody smell it? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to blame it on the dog. Of there. course. Are you kidding me? In Chicago, me? I farted, man. I was like, and I caught it first. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to be good. And the front row, that you can see him like this laughing, is like. <laughs> <laughs> and you can always know where it's coming from. It's because it came, because it depends on on the reaction. You know, the reaction time is like the two backup singers they go, and then the conguero behind them goes, and then the horns behind the conguero go. So you know it came from the front and moved to the back. <laughs> yeah. If if um, when you did you tour as a musician? Yeah. And you and you you've been in films. You've been in TV. What what makes you the happy? I think playing music makes you happy. Oh, being on stage playing music is the happiest place in the world. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get you on stage with me so we can rock it out, Baba. Yeah, let's he brought go. His guitar. He brought his guitar. He did. Guitar he did. Today? I want to be there. We got to go over there. It's, <clears throat> it's really very special over there. We're shooting a. Uh, I'm working on a film right now called Shelter, actually, and it's a cast of like Latinos in 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 a, in a heist. Um, it's a heist movie. Who's so, in that? Uh, Jane Ortiz from uh, Station 19. Precinct 19? What's that show? Yeah. Um, Lisa Vidal. She's in it. That's it? I told you not to come up, not to ask no, me I about names, man. I can't remember, remember names. Uh, Carlos Miranda, Sasha Merci, and Cam Jigandad. There you go. You yeah, 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 like that. that he knew yeah, it. Yeah, it was yeah. a test. Yeah. Chico Chiquitin. There you go, yeah. Um, but it's a bunch of young, cute Latinos with a couple of old tell people. Me about, <laughs> tell me about, because uh, you know we're both friends with uh, Mr. Don Cheadle. Te tell everybody about you meeting Don Cheadle. Don, Don is probably one of the realest people that you're ever going to meet really is. He, in he, your really? life. I mean, we're working on a movie that's got a budget of 100 mil. Right. It was Swordfish, uh, right? It's Swordfish. So oh, yeah. Travolta, Halle Berry, Hugh Jackman, and, and Don. Uh, I was sort of the, the, the fifth wheel. But uh, I came in as a day player, right, to do just a couple scenes with Don. And then Don was like, yo, I need a partner for this movie. And then they looked at me and said, all right, well, <laughs> that's it. How about that? <laughs> He's your partner for, for this movie. <laughs> and four months later, we're still. How about that? We're yeah, still recording. Awesome. Who did that? Soderbergh? Um, no, um, I can't remember. I'm, I'm looking at. We're gonna have an, uh, Dominic so Senna. Senna. Dominic Senna actually directed it. That yeah. was a. But the producer was. Oh, let's see. Joel Silver. Joel Silver. Yeah, okay. big yeah, big yeah. producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so so he's so by chance because Don Cheadle was in the position to say, "I need a partner. How about this guy?" And he's four months later. He's still by his side, and then they're still friends. We played golf, and yeah. I asked Don, I asked Angelo, and I, and I remember them. I said, "Hey, you guys know each other," and then it's that great story. We 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 had so much uh, we had so much fun on that set. We were throwing the football, the baseball, playing poker. By the way, don't ever play poker against He's Vinnie Jones. <laughs> no, oh, Vinnie Jones. Yeah, yeah. Vinnie Jones will take your money Tell all day long. That. So, don't you do play that. poker? Yeah. I never do. I never I lose money. I wouldn't I say this. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't play yeah, poker, so but I, I, when I when I have money to lose, I, I play. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to play. <laughs> I used to play a lot. Then, you know, retirement slowed me down. I don't play that much. Some of the guys still get together once uh, once a month, twice a month, and they play. But Don man. played in, uh, in, in like, poker. He, be, he beat Phil he, Ivey. He plays in poker tournaments. Oh, really? Ivey. Wow. He beat yeah. Phil Ivey. And he's very musical. Very Don musical. plays... He plays a little bit of everything, a little bit of sax, a little bit of guitar. He plays a little know, bass. We, some bass. Yeah. yeah. That's another guy we, we got to, you know. Let's That's put the band together, yeah, me, you, and Don. Let's go. He's on bass, you're on guitar. Well, you know, nobody wants to do that anymore. Nobody wants to go to a place and, 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 jam, fun. and jam. You're there every Wednesday, right? I'm there every Wednesday. You don't take a Wednesday off? Yeah, I do from time to time. I'll have other singers come in, and I'll just take the night off. You know, he's been trying sure. to get me over there for years. Let's go. But for me, it's like an industry night. Like, if Mark Anthony's in town, he'll jump on stage with me. If, mm -hmm. if, if, um, uh, anyway, whoever comes in, Omar Chaparro was there this last week, and he jumped on stage with me, and we had a blast. And he's, you know, 
Not you know, when guy. someone is music, when someone is musical like that, like let's say you know those people, you know, I hosted the jazz festival. They're not doing it at the Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl. I think it was Bowl. almost like forty years. They're, they're not bringing it back. Because wow, of, why? I don't know. The Philharmonic is different. I know. Yeah. We got it back up. It was selling out. Um, but what do we need? Do we do we just need a venue I, or? I say we go to the Greek. You know, we have somebody that can underwrite it. We go to the, do it at the Greek. But but I saw I saw Hell some yeah. incredible you know musicians and in the beginning, um, I've always loved music. But I remember seeing Playboy in '79 and and seeing you know Miles Davis there and seeing wow. uh, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and Bill Cosby was hosting. And then in like '12 or '13, Bill Cosby called me. And uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, have you I, seen my chair? Like, <laughs> in my, in my chair, man. And he said, you know, do you, I want you, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm retiring. But I think he knew what was coming in the next year. So he passed it over to me before it was taken away from him. And um, I did it for, I think, eight years. It was great. I did, I did all the things he told me not to do. He said, don't tip. He said, don't let the musicians in your room and leave right after you introduce the last act. I fucking stayed there till 2.30 in the morning. I tipped everybody, and we drank in that little ass room and smoked weed. I, I got, I was crazier than all the musicians combined. <laughs> Quincy Jones, you're probably telling the, the musicians, days. yo, don't let George in God, your room. Yeah. I know, man. <laughs> Lee, as I, soon as George. But the Hollywood Bowl, beautiful place. I, I, say played, about the I played the uh, the Playboy Mansion once, and there was a blackout. In the middle, just as we started our set, the whole place just was blacked out. So they put candles up, and you know they're like, play something. We're like, oh, no microphones, nothing. All we have is drums. <laughs> so we just started getting rumba on them. <laughs> Start doing some chants. I mean, how did you get booked? How, what was that? Midsummer night or what, what party was that? There was a party in there all the time. Um, I don't really know. I just know when they when the Playboy Mansion called. Do you want to play? Up? Yeah. How much do I have to pay? You say yes. Play yeah. When I was married, uh, they they said we want you to come to the Midsummer Night's uh, Dream, the party where. And, and uh, Anne goes, Oh, I've never been to the Playboy Mansion. I wanted to go, and I said uh, I told them no. And she goes, why did you tell him no? I said, because I'm not taking you to the fucking Playboy Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not fucking, I'm not going. If I get invited to the Playboy I'm not taking my wife. And, I and then when I got wife? divorced, I went <laughs> again. <laughs> and uh, Hef was there. Hef and I were cool. You know, he was, uh, he, he was, didn't really get up. Didn't really, you know, toward the end there. And the last time he was at the Playboy Mansion, they said, introduce Hef. And he's not going to stand up because, you know, he's older. And he'll just wave. And I said, I, was, I got to be really good at introductions from the talk show and all that, from being on stage. I said, I'm going to give this motherfucker an introduction. He'll stand up. Mm -hmm. I went back to the 60s, to Chicago, to hiding the magazine between your mattresses, to putting it in your closet, the fold out, the pin up, the bunny, the ears, the clubs, the guy who put it together, only one in the whole world, the, 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 the leader of it, the guy we all grew up with, the guy we owe our... our, our Sexuality to our yeah. fetish and what we like and what we don't like, and I said, Mr. Hugh Hepper, and with that, he fucking stood up. And yeah, like <laughs> and he went like that too. That you got him to stand up. When it's when the introduction is like that, they'll stand up. They'll stand. That's up. probably the last time que se le paró. But you know, I think, I, yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> no, pero, everything. Pero <laughs> exactly. But but I think that those as as those people go, we're losing people that. Something was their life. Like the Playboy was his life. Now, because of the name, the Hollywood Bowl, I don't think alleged, which is a great place, I don't think they want the association with Playboy, so they, they eliminated it. But people are, are passing that that was their life. Musicians that are passing that that's what they did. And they're being replaced with people that synthesize and push a button and, you know, no, nobody that plays. Nobody, no musicians play. Anymore, yeah. really. I mean, get a, you get a DJ in Vegas that literally they DJ charge, press play. That's yeah, a dude. <laughs> Yo, they, they charge. You know, press in play. Vegas, yeah. and God bless them, man. Four thousand to twelve thousand dollars a ticket, or the pool parties in Vegas during the day that are a grand to get in. Yeah, wow. And it's just, it's just beats. It's you know, no, I mean, I can't bag. say it like that. But they, they, right? Yeah. There's not, it's not a band, not instruments. 
Am I glad I don't look good in speedos? That's why I go to the pool parties. I get you a big, I get you a, a gold hat. Let's get him a one the, piece. And ah, 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 we'll print a tuxedo and look like you're wearing ah, a tuxedo. Ah, <laughs> but right, so so I commend you for for keeping live music alive. Oh, thank you, Baba. You know, the, I'm honored. You, I, I I'm just honored to be here with the both of you. That's what you're talking. The, uh, <laughs> the 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 interesting no. thing about our lifetime, think about all the things that we actually got to witness up close and personal that you know like our grandchildren are going to be reading about the Playboy Mansion and all these other things that existed way back when and the ice caps. I went to a battle of the bands between Harry James and Woody Herman. What was that at the Palladium? No, it was at a, it, the theater's not even there. It was a theater in the round in Covina. They don't do that anymore. Was that they the, don't the, do like the celebrity the theater? I don't know what the name of it was. I was I was still in high school. A theater there was a theater in the round out there. I think it was called <laughs> where where at? It was in it was Covina. in Covina. Okay, and the and round. they said Woody Herman won only because he had a drummer playing with him, Buddy Rich. The carousel? Uh, the carousel th- that was it. The carousel. He had Buddy Rich playing drums for him that night. Oh. And and so those are you, you don't see that. that How much did it take it? I don't remember. That was too too long ago. I remember going to see Buddy Rich again, and I took my wife with me. It was a place called uh, the Topper, the Top Hat. It was in the city of Rosemead, uh, right just west of Rosemead. Who was in fucking Rosemead? Woody Herman was in Rosemead. No, no, Woody Herman was at the Carousel. Buddy Rich Fuck. was now running his own band. Come on, man. And, and he went to play there, and I took the band. And I remember he started playing, and at his first song, he's playing. And he said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, 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 stop. He says, I'm Buddy Rich. I came here to play for you guys. You guys either shut the fuck up or get the fuck out or I'll leave. Hey, that's what I said. And when he did that, <laughs> and I got, everybody I got a shut TMZ. Up. How about that? I said that and I got a TMZ. He said it and what, everybody shut the fuck up? Yeah. And then, bam, he took off. It was a great show. But that was, you can do that stuff, I guess. Then. And you can't do it anymore so, because so of the now, when, but I, But I was Everyone a teenager likes. then. So now... You guys talking about all this stuff, and I get to see these were old guys. It just wasn't the Latino or the jazz stuff. But did you ever see Led, Ze- Led Zeppelin? No. Who did no. you go see as a kid at concerts? Temptations. Temptations. Yeah, I, I, I I saw it I, back then. I was in the sixties. I was in the mm. Motown. He went to Vietnam. I, w- I was in in the Motown. I went to see the Temptations. I bet I've seen the Temptations. Matter of fact, they're going to be. There's only one of them left, but the group's going to be playing someplace over here. Well, he should be the Temptation. <laughs> there, you, there you go. It's the Temptation. There. I've seen him at least six times, and I went to see him three times in a row with three different ladies. One right after another. Oh, and the last one was the one that I ended up getting married to. Hey, they thought that was out there. Antes. He's got some stories. He's been married. No wonder you got him on your podcast. No, this uh, guy's he's he's the greatest. I love I love you. Uh, and, and how long you been married? Fifty years. So fifty. Ooh. He's 50 got me years. He's, he's got, got you. He, he, better do what? Twice. He, he doubled he, down. Who are you? I, I'm who 25. He's like double. He doubled down. He lapped you in marriage. He lapped me. <laughs> and you know that they're they're still uh, very much. It's a beautiful family. That's beautiful. They I'm do lucky, things. Right. That, they do things as a family. The grandkids. Yeah. He's. You got it. Going tonight with the. Uh, you're gonna see Momo. And, I'm gonna go uh, see Momo tonight with my daughter and my son-in-law. Well, you mean? went to go see Angela Johnson too. I huh? went to see Angela uh, Sunday. Did you go out this much before, or or it's been since January? Yeah, well, I, when it comes to comedy, I, I love. We'd always. I love comedy, and like I said, when I when I saw it, the first time I did this show, I paid good hard-earned money to see you at least six times. You know, uh, to go see the show. I, I and you never asked for a refund, Bella. Never, never, never. never. I mean. Laughter is is healing. It, it, it's good for you, yeah, and, I, no and I love it. I went there, and then... I can't believe I didn't hear you laughing. As big as you laugh, I would have said, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh fuck, is that laughing? In oh, Higher, yeah. that was fun. No, I always gave it my, my, my all, not like right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you heard, I went to see your show a couple of weeks ago, and... You said you heard me laugh because it, 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 it was it was funny. Yeah. I, it was great to have you there. You oh, Grandma's there ovation. too. I was there. Yeah, I was there. You got a stand ovation. I was yelling Horvath from the back. Horvath, like I don't know Horvath. <laughs> the Horvath so Symphony. <laughs> yeah, Angela was good the other night, and tonight we're looking forward to go see Momo. Hey, this he, he gets out there, man. He's not like us, or like me. But Momo, he's out there in, in, in Brea, right? Yes. Well, th- that's like an hour away, something like that. He has to work near urgent care because of piernas. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. It's out there, yeah. Brea's, yeah. Brea's way out there. Yeah, it's a bit of a high but he's he's working. He's working. The one thing I was thinking about Momo is that he's like it's not sold out. And then you know, I wanted to say I'm gonna see him tomorrow. I said, 
What 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 makes you think that it would it would sell out? Like you just can't take it for granted. He goes, oh, it's not it's not sold out. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? What, what's what's this? It's a Wednesday night. You would never think. You never want to assume you're going to sell it. Momo, nobody knows. He hasn't had a show. Hasn't had a special. It's like you, you take what you get. You can't yeah. say, oh, it's not sold out. Yeah. Ben Gas on the podcast. If it's not sold out, then he didn't do proper uh, advertising. No, but you know. get get on the phone. Let's go. Yeah. Oh yeah, meet Angelo. Just just lie and buy a couple tickets. Let's. And go. how big is the place that you work, Angelo? Um, I'll get anywhere from about three hundred and fifty. The the. That's a lot of people. That's big. I think the most that ever showed up was. On a Halloween night, I think we did like 750 people in that place. Oh, wow. It was packed to the gills, though. But people had to sort of climb all over each other. But, um, yeah, regularly I'll do about 400 people on a, on a Wednesday night. Where do those night. people come from that go over there? Because there's, there's a lot of... It's a nice it's a nice mix of Latinos, European, the brothers show up. You know, it's, it's a nice... Do people uh, dress up? Uh, some people dress up and others are just casual like us. It's, what do you wear? I'm casual. You are? Yeah. Like jeans, no. No, not jeans, but, but you know, but nice. White shirt. Not, ni- nice casual. Yeah. But I don't like dressing up with the suits and stuff. Yeah, I don't go all out because it just gets too hot for me on stage, you know. Porque me estoy moviendo el culo a lot, you know. And yeah. Then, shh, I know, no, he does. It. He does. He can dance. He's not like us. He can eat. <laughs> Es poquito, poquito te querís. Te querís. Yo, I really like this one. Who's right the here, craziest? Who, who's the funniest? One of the under underrated fun. Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. You is, and I both know that Mark Anthony is one of the funniest people on the planet, wow. and a lot of people don't know this. Yeah. But the only way to really capture that because you can't script that. No. You can't script it. But I don't want to tell you my idea between me, me, you, and Mark because, you know, then somebody will steal it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think genuinely when someone has a sense of humor, you can't hide the sense of humor no matter no matter what they do. He There's is a, lot of people a that, funny, funny. As much as I'm an brother. introvert, I, I have a sense of humor that. Oh, you do. Yeah. That, that you never, do. Trust me, you do. Yeah. But even though I'm home most of the time by myself, I, I still, you know. You make yourself funny. You make yourself la- laugh. Yeah. <laughs> that's what matters. You I sit down yourself. and I can, make my, I can sit down and I write stuff. That, that's fine. <laughs> but do you ever I, I turn laugh. to yourself and say, "God damn, you're funny"? I think so. I laugh. At my, <laughs> I laugh at myself. That's how. That, that's yeah. how much I, I. I can remember being in Reno, where I'd been up all night. We had been drinking. We were, it was. What days were those? Uh, they had been in the eighties. Right a, now, I can't get you to go anywhere. It was. A, it was a uh, homicide convention. You know, <laughs> bunch of homicide cops there. <laughs> we're drinking. That sounds like a party. And, and, and that's what it is. Right? It, it's, it's a th- it's a three day drunk. <laughs> and I mean, we're up there. I got there and been up all night. And now I'm getting ready. My my partner called me. I said, Hey, let's go out. We got to six in the morning. I says, Come on, get your ass out. So I got in the shower. And I get in the shower and I had to step out of the tub. And when I stepped out of the tub, it was slippery, and I and I fell. I fell, and I tried to grab on. They had shower door, tried to grab on. Couldn't hold on. Scraped the shit out of my arm. Landed on my, didn't hit my face. Landed, hit my arms down, slapped the ground. And as soon as I'm down there, nobody else is in the room with me. I, first thing I said was, safe. Oh, <laughs> and I started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody could see me now, you know, I, I was safe, though. Were you crudo or you were you? That no, just was, happened to be a I, mishap. No, I was still drunk. I, was uh, crudo. I hadn't had time to be crudo yet. Uh yeah, do you I love the lab. Day, do you remember those days when you when when you wouldn't go to bed and you were still, still drunk in the morning? Those were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I say it and I smile. My wife doesn't smile. Those were good times. <laughs> I know the wives. <laughs> Wives don't never get those well, kind of jokes. I don't understand. I don't know. When we went so to the, when we go to the Laugh Factory before the pandemic, we would go to IHOP right there on uh, La Cienega in Santa Monica, and we'd probably get home at five. Like, we'd stay in that club there. Like, we did drinking in there yeah. until 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I could stay. I can hang. I, I can do that stuff. It just, there's no place, you know, we, we haven't gone any place to do it. And when I do that, most of the time, the wife won't, you know, she didn't go with me. Yeah. And now she's more concerned about, okay, just call us and we'll go pick you up or, you know, Uber. Yeah. You know, because, and the last thing I want to do now, especially in Indiana, I don't want to hurt anybody on the road. I don't want to drink when I'm driving. No. It's, so it's it's just not worth it. But I still go. I, I I have fun. I do. There's nothing better than 
seeing a live performance. Yes. Nothing I better agree. than seeing, listening to music. And I think if we're going to survive all of this variance and all these things that, you know, once we get protected and all that, that, you know, the Hollywood Bowl open. I'll go get my third place. Pfizer shot at your place. We'll go down there on a Wednesday night. Yeah, we'll go. go. Make a day of it. Yeah, make a day of it. I don't know. I was on the way down here. I was even thinking, you know, like you say, you're an introvert. You stay in your house all day. Yeah. How does somebody like you, that has so much notoriety, how do you go out and how do you go out and have a have a good time? I can go out, and but you, how do you go out? You you can't. Well, I have a VIP section for him and security, so I'll keep him protected. You know, I don't really. It's a trip though when you go to some some place and. They either hear your voice or, because you can't imagine it. You don't think everything, yeah. you know, you're going to go into a place. I, and sometimes I don't go in. Sometimes I go someplace and there's people in there. I'll be like, oh, I'm not going to go in there. And I go to this donut shop. I don't ever go to Starbucks or anything. I go to this donut shop and there's like three guys in there. And I'm like, oh, there's three fucking guys in there. And I'm like, oh, I'll just get some coffee and go in. 11 pictures later, you know, <laughs> it's probably 6.40 in the morning. Or now if you go Uber Eats or Grubhub and I open the door, I take pictures with the with the drivers. Sure. <laughs> That's what happened when I see Angela the God. other night. She uh, gave me a shout out while we were there. After the show, she invited myself and my family back to her room. Yep. So they came to ask. People were lined up. They wanted to take pictures. And one of the guys, one of the people there told my son, told my son, you want me to get more security over here for you guys? And my son just said, no, my dad, he's not going to want security. He just, he'll let him. And I said, it's okay. Just quick ones. Okay, that's it. We got to go. They're they're getting pissed off at me, and, and let's go. But it it does happen. You know, when that happened, when I went to go see uh, Angela, people just wanted to take. Where, where was she working at? Comedy uh, store? Yeah, there in Brea. Oh, the Improv? Oh, yeah, at the Improv. So it was a, it's a new newer venue. They had an older one. They moved it up a block. It's a nice place inside. You know how long I've been on the road? I can tell somebody, if a woman wants to cool out, by the way, she puts her hand on my back. Thank you. Is that, <laughs> you know what? I haven't had a lady. Or, re- or a man. <laughs> I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. I, I need share. details. I tell need details. Us. I have not had a lady a reach that far. No, serious. And if my wife's around me, she'll break her arm. No, I know. She would. Because <laughs> she's, she's beautiful and genuine. But, she, but she's from the barrio. You know that when you have a lady from the hood, even wife or anything. They know where to hit you. That's my man. <laughs> you know, she even jumped on my case the other day because on the show with, uh, I, I forget who it was Uh-oh. here. Oh. I said, yeah, my wife said, you know, me importa madre. And uh, we were talking about Bill Cosby. One of said, yeah, he's still guilty. And Liza was here. Yeah. And I said, yeah, my wife said, I don't care. It co- I said, created controversy because I said, it's the law. This is why. Right. I'm not saying innocent or guilty. This is the law. And she just uh, and I on the air I said my wife said Sister Mary Clarence said me porta madre whether the law or not this guy's dirty, and she said, you better let George know I don't talk like that I wouldn't have said me porta madre, <laughs> and I said, a literary license I said it you know it's okay I yeah, said Sister liberties. Mary Clarence, you know she said Sister Mary Clarence. no way would he say that that's all it was you know uh, it's a touchy subject uh, Bill Cosby. A touchy dude. It, it's I mean, a look very, how quiet he got. Yeah, he's trying to work and he's got nowhere to work. I don't think he'll. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's going to find any place to work. Well, you know, with all these live streaming uh, oh. things, maybe he could sort of start his own movement and get yeah. his. You know, his almost. I mean, because we've talked a lot in here about how like uh, the Night Stalker would have his sort of like contingent of fans once he was in prison and whatnot. Now Bill's out, he can get like a Patreon or some shit, shit like that. There's ways you. Can I got fans set calling. They up. they wish they were having his child still. They're, they're, they're sick people. Yeah. But you're gonna find yeah. the same thing. I'm not gonna mention which local National League baseball team he plays for, and I'm not gonna mention his name. But there's, he is on administrative leave right now. Yeah. And nobody wants to touch him, and he'll probably never play. You mean again. the player? Is, yeah. Oh, the, no! Someone's going to pick him up. He's too good a player. I I, I don't think they're going to pick him is up. Is it? Is but according to him, there was nothing other it than was consensual. some rough play. It was consensual. He he says it. There's no doubt. They have the the tapes. You know, they have the text message. It's consensual, but are you going? You know, the 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 the, the gist is. 
how are you going to justify that heavy a consensual if it was as heavy as it was with her treatments and her pictures? And then, you know, everybody knows you're a cochino, and they just don't want to. That's it's, true. it's easier to say you were a thief than... But are you being are you being judged in the court of public opinion? Yes. 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 <laughs> which which firm, yeah. those are the things that when you read, I remember I remember when Villaraigosa was running for mayor and James Hahn did that uh, commercial of him letting out uh, uh, drug dealers early on furlough and there was somebody smoking a pipe in a darkened room. And it made it look like, so my grandmother says, I'm not going to vote for uh, Viragosa because I heard that he smokes, you know, crack. And I'm like, from where? And it's a commercial, but it implied, mm-hmm. not even him, but somebody that's older. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's the imagery. Yeah, whoever did that knew exactly, exactly what they were doing. Exactly what they were doing. So I think um, in the court of public opinion. Exactly. That's say, Right now, when you stop and look at it, it's taken this long for the investigation. There, there's no problem with DNA. Why haven't they filed? Why haven't they done this? So they're, they're, I don't know that anything will ever be filed, ever be adjudicated in court of law, but in the court of public opinion, he's already doomed. Okay, so this is what happens. Just when, like mm, Mr. Cosby. This is what happens when you have a, a detective. So those things have been, it's been going on for maybe a month and a half now, two oh, months? longer than that, about two months. And hasn't been charged. Okay, so you would say legally, if it's been going on that long and he hasn't been charged, there's He's nothing to charge him with. until proven yeah, guilty. Exactly. I, I can't imagine, even after two months, that they're waiting for lab results. Those would have already been in. And he's already admitted, yeah, we had sex. So I don't know what kind of lab results they're waiting for. You know, now it's a matter of being able to prove you see her I'm allegations. Saying? And if you can't prove it, well, then he's going he's gonna to get away in the eyes of of the law and the criminal justice system, but in the court of public opinion, he's already been. But people make convicted. their minds up, sure. And you know, yeah. kids and sure. and baseball, and and you're out. Has there been a player that Yasiel Puig's not with the team? No, and he's not playing with anybody right now. He's not playing with anybody. Nobody will pick mm-hmm. him up. So I've I've gone out. I still have lunch with old friends of mine from the department that have done time in prison, that have gotten out, and they got convicted for their thievery. They were my friends before they got caught, before they went in, they did their time, they paid their punch. They're still my friends, and I wouldn't hesitate to go out to lunch, and I have. Does Sister Mary Clarence know you're still hanging out with Oh yeah, with yeah, 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 she, okay. she approves this. All right. You just yeah. wouldn't leave them in your house unattended if they're thieves, because well, they, they yeah, they can come in my house. But I mean, but I mean, if you is is that what they say? So if you commit a crime, and you go do your time and you come out, you served your yeah, you should be yeah. exonerated yeah, exactly. of all tasks. Yeah. You, you don't owe me nothing, you know. And, and they even told me, you can ask me any question you want to. I'll tell you everything that happened. Well, I said it's none of my business. You did it. You you paid your time. That's your personal business. You're my friend before. You're still my friend today. So I, th- I think I think now, if you look at that, which is true, somebody said, "Hey, I, I I served my time," but now because of public opinion, you serve your time, but it stays with you. The stigma of being exactly. whoever you are stays with you. Now, yeah. now it's it, it it's almost like a dirty word. It's sexual involved. So I'll go out with, I'd stand tall with my friends that stole money and did their time. But I'd be, would I be that willing to stand tall with some guy that's com- accused, only accused, of a sexual crime? And now I've got to explain, continue to explain that to right. everybody else. Yeah. So it, it, it's that's a, tough, a tough one. But, yeah, al- but also, you know, like, you know, that team will have to make a decision uh, and what they're liable for, maybe they didn't vet. I don't think you can vet that. Like, they try to vet things, but you can't if vet. I, if I were a betting man, I'd bet that he's not going to play. For the for the team I ever again, he'll I never take move. the field with them again, no. and I don't think he'll take the team. He'll take the field with if anybody. If Alabama had a team, he'd be playing. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, <laughs> quick question, dumb question. That's true. What are we talking about here? <laughs> uh, for people, myself included, who don't know the situation, there is a player on a local team mm-hmm. that has been accused of felony battery, essentially. Okay. You know, because he met a lady. He said she was into rough sex. He has exchanged text messages 
where there is evidence that she was into rough sex, but it was... He might have choked her out a little still, too much. Yeah, yeah, he may still have seems to go beyond that, perhaps. Exactly, or, yeah, okay. where she is no longer saying yes, and there's still more violence going on. Right. And so, so he sort of turned into a bit of a pariah amongst exactly. the team. Exactly. Like, okay. So now yeah, okay. everybody's just kind of stay away because they've all got wives. You know, they've got girlfriends, and hey, you hanging around with that You have perp? kids that yeah, go, yeah, and no, totally. jerseys, and... Yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's kind of a tough situation. I, but what's motivating? Bad. I mean, I, I guess that's the question. I, like, what actually truly happened between these two individuals? Uh, because if it was in fact consensual, what's motivating her to come out and say these things? Was she looking for a payout? He is the he, highest paid player. Is she looking? Ooh. Aaron from downtown. He's and the why did he player. not settle? Um, I don't know. It sometimes was, when they're looking for money, they give you an opportunity to to make an offer before it becomes they go public. public. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you say I got nothing to hide, or if you don't want to, if he says be extorted, hey, you can say anything you want to through his attorney. Hey, we've got text messages right here saying you liked it. You like you liked it. it right? You liked right. it. No, and and I understand that. That's me right there. That's one of my. Wow. But as someone who's 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 trying to guide this young man in 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 the best possible way, there's just no coming out of this situation unscathed. So uh, it's it's interesting that they actually let this go as far as they as they did. So it like just came out. This stuff just came to light. The or the, the well, events just came out. No, it or, came out about three weeks, three, four weeks ago now. Okay. It's been out, and they've just announced that they're keeping him on administrative leave longer. Okay. Leave. Well, I will say this. I will say that there's attorneys out there, and they're very expensive, but there's attorneys out there that have saved many people who were high profile from either charges or from prison because you pay them so much, and they're so connected. They're very good at what they do. That they ask you number one thing, get off your fucking phone, get off your social media, do not talk to anybody, and let me do my work. Mm -hmm. And they work behind the scenes. But if you're going to be tweeting things and defending, it's not going to help you. Yeah, he's dead in the water once he starts doing that. So, yeah, there was there was someone who changed lanes and hit somebody in oncoming traffic and, and killed a driver. And that person never was charged or never went to prison because of the lawyer and the oh, deal. Wow. Yeah, they, they can do that. The friends with the DA and friends Paulson's in friends. high places. I, I just got to believe that he's going to have problems. I, I, and, and I, right now, just knowing the system like I do, I find it difficult to believe that they're going to find him criminally wrong in anything you know there's not going to be it would surprise me if there were charges filed against him however this gentleman that just got convicted yesterday of the taking the guys up to his apartment the big uh was that donator he was he used to give money to the uh, democratic uh, party in west hollywood he invited uh some guy up there, they gave him, filled him up with meth. Oh, yes. Uh, who's that? And now he's yeah. being charged with. He's been charged. Yeah. He just got convicted of two counts of murder yesterday. Yes, because they got high in his place. Yes. And then what? he was furnishing the drugs for him. Uh, just got convicted yesterday. Who's that? I don't you remember. You want to say the name? We'll cut it out. I don't, yeah, no. I, um, but. Who is that? I mean, there's a Los Angeles Times article, on, which I can read. It's Ed Buck. Ed Buck, there you go. Con, uh, Ed, Buck? Ed Buck convicted in meth overdose deaths of Gemmel Moore and Timothy Dean. Um, long time, Ed Buck, longtime fixture of West Hollywood politics, convicted Tuesday. Um, charged that he supplied the meth that killed two men during party and play encounters at his apartment. And so, and that had gone on. They had tried, they had investigated him uh, since last year, you know, trying to do it. And they finally just filed, a, uh, filed against him. And didn't take long for them to get him in and get him out. It only took two days, I think, of deliberation. Well, I will, I will say that uh, there are people who uh, come in contact with other people, and then those other people try to extort money from someone for just being around them. And with no allegation that is, that is real, other than an allegation they can make 
that would be in the in the court of public opinion and that would taint that person, but they do it with no substance for money. Sure. I agree with you. There's people that do that. And this this yeah. guy this guy was and trying if you to defend somebody, yourself. You use the word taint, and I think that's what he was doing. In the taint right there? <laughs> right there, brother. In the taint. If you're in the taint area, that's you're that's almost it. like <laughs> that's high real estate right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's just asking for trouble. All right, let's get out of here. Wrap yeah, it up, this, Grant. This, this was great. Uh, talk. talk uh, it, yeah. what, what else? Are we Ang- doing? Anything to plug, uh, Angelo? No. We can play any. No. No. How long did we talk? No. Just, we're not plugging anything. But uh, but I didn't hear any guitar though. That's the only thing. No, no. We, I'll, oh. we'll, we'll, All right, we'll you. keep we'll keep that off the air. We'll keep that off the air. <laughs> uh, but leave, leave us voicemails. We do uh, answer those eight one eight five three eighteen forty three. <laughs> or not right now it sounds like let's <laughs> answer one right now uh you guys have headphones actually you know we don't have the setup ready i'd have to have oh, man, some prepped in advance all right uh but that's thanks, it thanks, thanks for coming it's out thank you it's good to have Yo, I mean, we, we talked about all kinds of stuff i yeah. love this I, man. i'm just uh just... this will be one to remember i'm honored this is it i'm uh, hey. i'm truly honored yeah, absolutely Hey, really, truly. Sabes, Papa, I love yeah, you. I love yeah. you. Hey, and this is the show. This is how it is. This is how you do yeah. it. Easy, huh? I want to speak yeah. for George. Come back anytime. Mm-hmm. Come back anytime. Nice. And just hang I'd out. love to. Are you kidding me? I'm just kidding. I don't care who's here. I'm going to be. Who's that? Oh, shit. It's Angelo. <laughs> but you know what? His, <laughs> restaurant is, his restaurant is really, really, really good. Yeah, please. Come from Really breakfast. great. You guys will, you guys will it's love right it. It's right there on Vineland and Ventura. It's great. The three V's. How can you go wrong with V's? You know what? It's really Vagina a good Vagina starts with V. <laughs> it can't be bad. You know what I'm saying? Verga. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I'm too gringo for half this shit. Uh, 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 all right. Thank you, Angela. Awesome. All right, Papa. Thank you. Hello,